You got and, something? Uh, yeah, big big story. Uh, I'll be on Red Eye tonight. Nice. Ha <laughs> ha, Fox News. Nice. Uh, Red Eye. Of course, it's on at 3 in the morning, but uh, DVR it. Mm -hmm. DVR that motherfucker. And uh, watch your pal Ant on Red Eye. I think we're trying to get Andy Levy in today, because yeah. Patrice was supposed to stop in, but he's got some stuff he's got to take he's care sleeping. of sleeping. What's he doing? Who knows? <laughs> we'll get him in soon, though, because we love Patrice on this yeah. show. But Andy Levy might stop in. Mm -hmm. Might pop his head in and say yeah, hi. Yeah, that'd be fun. And we got the Guar guy. <laughs> Oh, what's his name? Optimus oh, Prime. <laughs> Not oh, odorous. Oh. Yeah, it is. It is, it is. Odorous. Is it really pronounced odorous? Orungus. All right. I'm sorry. I'm laughing just, at you. I'm going to call him Optimus Prime. <laughs> <laughs> odorous. We'll be in here at nine. I hear he's a character. I hear he does very good radio. So, really? He better. He, yeah. He he'll do. Uh, he'll do all right. Is he the guy with the spikes on his shoulders and stuff? Uh, let me pull up a picture for you guys. All right. Hang on one moment, please. <laughs> Dark helmet. Dark helmet. David Wright's helmet. still up there. David Wright. Stupid David Wright. Ah, uh, let's see. It's uh, this guy. Ah. Do you know what he... Is he, uh, he going to be in his full regalia? Yes, that was actually one of the, the, the points that were being made of why we should have... Well, he'll wear his whole costume. Yes. It's wonderful. Ah. He's cut out his coolie hole. Um, do you know their oh, music? Oh, my God. That guy? No, no, it, uh, no. It's not really. Um, you Guar know, for Christ's sake. Guar. It's yeah, just, but Guar has a following. Yeah, but it's pretty much the show, and no one really buys Guar albums. I think you go to see the live shows. Well, they do have a new album coming out. Uh, Travis will tell me before the show. Yeah, oh. their new album came out last week, oh. and I believe it debuted at number ninety six. You with... have to name. You have to tell us the name of the album because oh, I, I guarantee right, it's going to be kind of like. Ugh. Well, it sold five thousand. <laughs> I like how he painted in abs, <laughs> and they're really badly painted in. <laughs> it's like strong bed. <laughs> oh, this is going to be hysterical. Come on. Yeah. How does he? He's not going to have that whole face makeup shit on, is it? That looks like it yeah, takes he, forever unless it's a mask. Dude, he's putting on his costume right oh, now. It's a mask. His costume. He'll be in full costume. Wow. Uh, the new album is called Lust in Space. Oh, I get it, and it's um, and apparently he talks about politics and and shit, dressed up like that. He's well versed, and I guess uh, he'll he make you eye. he'll make you sound like a liberal. Really? Yeah, he's hardcore. Well, that's good. Hardcore Republican, hardcore uh, all the way. Uh, I was I was like cringing. Why does, why does he got a penis thing? He's got a giant Schween cover <laughs> that is like some kind of devil thing. They're just. I hope he doesn't show up with the penis. I hope he does. Thing on. <laughs> I hope he does. If he does, we're gonna make Sam kiss it. <laughs> oh, oh, he's gonna make me sound like a liberal. That's yeah, what people that's, were that's telling pretty, me on Twitter last that's, night. That's a little difficult to do. I was so pissed off driving in. I heard fucking Bloomberg. Yeah, what's is, Bloomberg is, up to? He's got his fucking schnoz in uh, uh, gun issues. He he wants to now on the outside this sounds reasonable and logical but as I see it it's unnecessary. He wants uh, a no carry while you're drinking um, policy, where if you're caught uh, carrying a sidearm on you mm -hmm. uh, illegally and you're you're drinking over some level i don't know they don't haven't even said what they deem being intoxicated is for having a uh, carry a weapon um it will be illegal i have to tell you it sounds what? reasonable yeah on the surface it sounds reasonable on the surface what's the people. problem the problem is give me some fucking statistics you fucking mayor piece of shit how many people in New York City, because he doesn't control the state, it's just city, right. citywide. How many people citywide, legal gun owners, that have a license to carry concealed? I'm not talking about thugs who are illegally carrying guns. Uh, accidentally shoot people while they're drunk. I want the fucking stats. I want to know how big a problem this is that he's got to fucking legislate again against legal gun owners. I got to say, it must be a, a, a tiny number. It, dude, it's got to be nothing that there's drunk people wielding weapons around shooting. You know who's drunk and stoned and fucking shooting each other? Criminals. That's who's doing it. And missing their targets and hitting kids. Criminals who are already illegal. Stop legislating against legal gun owners. And, of course, he wants to outlaw armor-piercing uh, bullets, 
which um, you know, again, are uh, I, I thought they were illegal. Um, but he wants to uh, outlaw those. I don't really need those. To tell you the truth, they're probably fun to shoot but at you, uh, big if, metal plates. If you outlaw those, I mean, people are going to get their hands on them anyway. Of course, if then then only the bad people see, have them. See, I've learned a lot from you. It's Ant. it's it's the word they just. I used to be the get rid of gun guy. Yeah, they just legislate against legal gun owners but now because I, they can't do anything. about I understand the, the issue guys. a lot a lot better because of you. It's it's uh, just abominable that this guy uh, is putting his schnoz in this uh, uh, this whole thing. Oh, it's annoying the piss out of me. Oh, great. Uh, odorous. Uh, we got more info on Odorous's, Odorous. Odorous. Uh, costume. Uh, Mark in Massachusetts. Mark. Hey, how's it going? Hey. Hey, so I've seen Guar like four or five times, and this guy's like costume has a, like a prosthetic dick in it. That sprays fake jizz with some pneumatic like pressurized system. All right, who gets oh, right, right. who gets squirted with jizz today on our show? E Rock. Yeah, E Rock. Of course. We haven't heard from E Rock since E-Rock. coming back from break. No. E Rock gets jizz in the face today. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! We gotta that make would that be great. happen. Oh my god, would that be fantastic? That Thank you happen. for that, Mark. That's all I got. And if he's listening, he better bring in the the apparatus that shoots the jizz. Yes, bring your oh, jizz. I'm sure I'm sure he's got a box of stuff that, like, screws onto the crotch of this thing, because I've seen this, like, four different fucking things. Okay. Every time I see him in concert, they got, like, a heroin needle and shit. It's fucking crazy. Nice. No, I'm looking and forward he, to it, the guy. I, I hear he does uh, really good radio, and I hear he's really good on Red Eye. Yeah, yeah. So, I, they, I've they never like seen... Over there. I was supposed to watch those clips. You were supposed to watch those oh, clips, please. but... I slept till six last yeah, night. Who has time for that crap? Show prep? What's that? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Mitch, is. White Plains. Mitch. Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, man. Hey, man. Nothing. Listen, uh, Anthony, man, he's not really going after the legal gun owners. He's probably just adding a charge for the stupid practical purposes and Sean Diddy Combs of the world. Uh, no, no, it's not. He's talking about legally uh, legal gun owners that have uh, permits to carry firearms um, that you will ha- get a, like, uh, carrying while intoxicated uh, charge if you're carrying your gun uh, legally and uh, you're, you're, uh, you're drinking. Now, like I said, on the outside, it sounds good because you don't want somebody drunk wielding a gun around. But the uh, fact of the matter is, I want to I want to see statistics. I want to see how many people are killed, um, and not not people breaking into their house or trying to jack their car, and the guy happens to be drunk and shoots the guy legitimately. I want to know how many people are killed uh, tragically by firearms by legally owned guns. That are being carried legally, but the guy is uh, intoxicated, uh, which is, you know, based on, let's say, a DUI, you know, point oh eight or, or higher. Actually, he's not going after these club these club guys who just carry guns because they need to protect their bling and stuff? Yeah. All right. The law would use the same definition of intoxication as the legal limit for driving. Let me tell you something. I could fucking put a grouping in center target at probably a point one. Don't you shoot better when you ha- you've had a few? Oh, it loosens you up a little bit. Sure. Yeah, you're, you're <laughs> no, practice drunk, though, don't no. you? <laughs> Actually, it says right in... You know, you should know as a gun owner, a responsible gun owner, you should know you're not, you're not firing your weapon when you're uh, drinking. It's not... Uh, it, 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 you, you know that. And again, it's a constitutional right... He said it's the same thing. The mayor actually said, he goes, uh, uh, carrying while intoxicated should be the same thing as driving while intoxicated. Driving, again, is a privilege in this country. It is a privilege that is doled out and can be taken away from you uh, without any rights to you or anything. Uh, Gun ownership and uh, actually bearing the arm, which is uh, carrying the arm, uh, is a constitutional right, which cannot be taken away from you. How about drunk talking? Freedom of speech, First Amendment. How about you get the First Amendment and uh, get people drunk while talking? That's crazy, actually yeah. in certain cases, I would appreciate that. That's crazy. because some people <laughs> really babble like assholes when they when they're drunk. I'm and I wait had for it. a long time. Oh my god! <laughs> if you genuinely go away for a long time. <laughs> I was gonna, yeah, I but a, uh, it's I a, a line constitutional from the right, too. <laughs> and I don't think um, intoxication uh, uh, should uh, infringe on on your right. I mean, what I mean, other I what other right uh, is infringed upon by 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 drinking? But I think you just trying to get these guns out of these clubs. I mean, that's that's the main issue. I think. Who gives a shit? We're not in these clubs. You know what? 
Yeah, yeah. I understand, if, if, I understand that. You're I don't need bub anymore. in the club. If people are firing off weapons drunk in the club, that's one thing. If they're firing off weapons and they're illegal guns, they're illegal anyway. So whether he's drunk or not, the guy's going to fucking jail. If you're a legal gun owner and uh, you're blowing a point oh eight. Uh, it doesn't matter that maybe if someone tries to jack your car on the way out that you can't now carry because you've had a couple of beers. Go fuck yourself. That's what I say. That's my opinion. All right. Thank you. All right. Have a, have a good day, guys. Thanks, man. Uh, Jim in New York, if law passes, lots of cops will go to jail. <laughs> yeah, right? We would love our, our cop friends. Well, responsible police officers put their guns away. Uh, of course. Well, uh, we're looking at Odorous's uh, bio there, Ann, and you noticed yes. a couple fine little tidbits about Odorous that we did not know. Quite amazing. Did you know Odorous is the lead singer of Guar? Of course, according to Guar uh, Mythos, Odorous is 43 billion years old, Opie. He was assembled on the planet Scumdogia. His uh, father was reportedly a supercomputer and his mother a Petri dish. He also ate Jerry Springer on a stage once. Let's not forget. And he's going to be on Red Eye with you, Anthony. You better be in the newsroom. What does that mean? Well, that's when you get relegated to um, downstairs. By yourself? Yeah, you sit in a stool. What the where, fuck where is people, that about? Where people are milling about doing work, and you sit on a stool with a, a light and a camera and a monitor. Why can't they squeeze you in with the big boys? Well, usually they do, but last time I was there, um, they had a last-minute guest, which was one of the Fox News guys. Right. So he had to sit up there because he works for Fox News. No, I understand that, but why can't they just make room for everybody? That that makes it hard. If well, you're in a studio by yourself as everyone else is in, having fun upstairs or wherever yeah, they are, yeah. that's got to be a hard hard thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just looking at him. It's a poker, and apparently there's some kind of law against wearing weird masks on your head. I tried to explain to them this is my real face. They shot me up with elephant tranquilizer and threw me in the back alley. Whoa. Oh my wow. God, that's that is absolutely... I haven't seen a collection of degenerates and weirdos as vast since the last Republican convention. <laughs> so were you mobbed? while you, Have you been mobbed while you're there by adoring fans? No, they, they drove me about 40 miles outside of town and dropped me in the desert. Uh, they're trying to pretend I'm not even here. After the show is over, I'm walking back down to the Rio, and I'm going to kill everyone. <laughs> <laughs> that guy's coming in, huh? Yeah. All right. Oh, my God. <laughs> we'll have fun with him. <laughs> we'll agree to this. Red eye tonight. <laughs> oh, I did We both did it. Jesus, okay. Look we at the thought, video. We thought Patrice was going to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, see, maybe we should take people inside the show again. <laughs> we booked the Guar guy because we thought Patrice would just make fun of him. And now it's just me and Ant with the Guar guy. So <laughs> now what? Someone's getting shot with jizz today, though. We know that. <laughs> they call him interplanetary correspondent. Yes. Hey, is E-Rock around? Will he agree to the jizz thing? I'm sure he is. Officially. He's a, E-Rock's a team player. Well, where's E-Rock? Oh, yeah. He's in the office. If he could come down here because we got to explain the jizz thing to him. I guess the Guar guy has a huge, like, penis apparatus thing that shoots jizz. Yeah. And we yeah. want E-Rock to take one in, in the face. How did... <laughs> I'm just wondering how people worked uh, on the news as Odorous was uh, doing that. Because he's, he's in a room where people are he's a bit mill of a milling about. Yes. Yeah. Bit Here comes E-Rock. Yeah, take Dan, your time, E-Rock. I, I love, I love the people lumbering. that... that Slowly walk down the hall. You know Lumbering. what kind of pressure we have on a daily basis in front of live microphones? The least you can do is get down here quickly and help us out. I'm told that uh, that penis apparatus thing, yeah. it actually has its own name. It's called the Cuttlefish of Cthulhu. I don't know why, but that's the official <laughs> name. <laughs> Iraq. Uh, yes, sir. So the Cuttlefish of what? Cthulhu. 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 Uh, shoots fake jizz. Would you uh, take a load in the face for the show today? Know it's fake. Like, like I have a choice in this. Of course, I'm gonna have well, to. Well, we'll ask this. him what the jizz is made out of. I'm sure he's been working on made of jizz. <laughs> it's probably his own jizz he just yeah. collects. <laughs>
What do you think he makes his jizz out of? He's probably he's probably been working on this recipe for a long time. I think a lot of people make it out of like um, corn, lotion, corn syrup, mm -hmm. and um, and uh, like icing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know. <laughs> what it, what it, we got the recipe once from Penthouse. Uh, what they use? Yeah, I forgot what they said. Yeah, I forgot too. That means we need a memory. Yeah, stupid memory. Who needs happen. one of those? Oh, look at that. All right. Well, you're gonna take the the jizz in the face then. I guess I have to. It's not real jizz. Chill out. Yay, e rock <laughs> <laughs> All right, back to work. He looks <laughs> silly. All right, and let's say hi to Jeremy in Alabama. Very good news, Anthony. He has the perfect jizz recipe. Ooh. Yes, Jeremy. Hey, guys. Hey. Yay, uh, eat the recipe, and, and don't ask me how I know this, <laughs> but uh, pina colada drink mix that you'd buy at the grocery store, mixed down with a little bit of water, you can spray it on a girl's face all day, and she's not going to get sick. What what is it? Pina what? colada mix? And yeah, a little pina water? Mix. Yeah, it's like you'd use at F.A. Riley's there. Plug, plug. <laughs> I'm trying to think if that even uh. looks like... Does that look like jizz? <laughs> yeah. I guess it could, because yeah. I think that's what um, uh, Bear from Maryland is saying. That's pretty much the same stuff. Oh, really? Pina colada mix is... Um... Wow, Bear's going to back you up, Jeremy. Uh, Bear. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Urgh. <laughs> I think what he's referring to is a product called Coco Lopez. It has like the same color, same consistency as a nice batch. <laughs> and, and it looks like a can of bukkake. Yeah, I've seen uh, people making that, uh, making like a pina colada and pouring that shit in, and it does yeah, uh, have a jizz-like uh, appearance. Use Coco Lopez and pineapple juice. Dump it in there. You got yourself a nice pina colada, but it is some sticky, juicy, oh. <laughs> batchy consistency. The, well, hold on. This uh, I'm reading this recipe for theatrical cum looks like real cum. Has no sugar, uh, so as to discourage yeast, and has natural uh, taste so that you can really get into the fantasy because it contains uh, raw egg white. You should make it fresh right before use and discard the leftovers. If you Boy, are concerned about great. using a raw egg, either don't swallow it or use pasteurized egg whites, which can be purchased at most supermarkets. However, fresh egg give better consistency. One cup water, two tablespoons cornstarch, one raw egg white, one tablespoon plain yogurt, and a pinch of salt. Yes. And that will give you um, the perfect fake jizz. We should have the yep. boys have a fake jizz making <laughs> contest. Uh, fake jizz bukkake contest. <laughs> Ugh. We'll use Patty's face. <laughs> Again. She hasn't been on the show in a while. <laughs> Thank you, Bear. I don't right, like the taste yep. of it. Are we ready for odorous? Oh, odorous? They've been pushing odorous on us for weeks. Yeah. And, and nothing against odorous. I just don't know much about them. I don't either. I know yeah, uh, well, uh, I've seen Guar over the years. Just yeah. seen them. Mm-hmm. Not, I've never gone to a show or nothing, but they, no, no, I've, they I've, kind of have yeah. something going on. And I think he's the, the last original member, right? Yeah, apparently, apparently so. And I guess he uh, he knows how to talk. And he's going to be on Red Eye with you tonight. So Yes. So you guys better get along here today. Yeah, we'll be fine. All right. Uh, we're going we're gonna to get ready for Odorous. Uh, Urungus? Did he bring his fake penis thing with the jizz? That I'm not sure about. I did see him... Uh, pretty much nude in uh, Steve's office. Oh, well, that makes sense. <laughs> what does he look like without the costume? Because he's, you know, he's a little scary when he's all dressed up. I just walked by very briefly and just saw what looked like a, a tall man wearing like a black Speedo thing. Uh, Getting and, collated uh, by a large man with a mustache. You know, so, and I didn't really feel like standing there and like looking in to get a good look at this new, pretty much nude man. So I just kept on yeah. walking. Yeah. Up, uh, Steve. Steve, what do we know uh, on Otis? Is in. he psyched? Yeah, he's uh, really excited. Apparently, um, he did. Uh Odorous did Red Eye last night and apparently got into it with Adam Carolla. Oh, he did it last night. Yeah, he did it last night. I thought he was doing oh, it tonight. See, the bio said tonight. Um, he got into it with Adam? Got into it with Carolla, who was apparently too cool for the room. I don't really... Adam's uh, always too cool for the fucking room. He's got to lighten up. We'll have to ask him what that was about. Yeah. He, he really he has to it. lighten up. About. And they just went at it about what? They went at it about, I, I guess... Yeah, I guess... That's him without his costume? He's just some dude. Yeah. Are you kidding That's me? That's so funny. That's Dave. Come on. He looks like a computer tech. <laughs> that's yeah. him? Well, yeah. his father was a computer. I oh, believe. really? Oh, yeah. that's right. Yeah, yeah, you're the right. The bio said. I forgot. He's Th that's him without his costume? Yeah. Million years old. Oh, now this is going to be easy. Yeah. Now he's, he's, See, he should have never let us uh, see him without the costume on. 
Well, he's made uh, there's there's videos of 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 Dave on uh, on on YouTube. Uh, calling him Dave, Dave now. Well, that's it's just Dave. I'm sorry. That's his, his name. It's, it's it's no big mystery. His real name is Dave Brocky, and that's and uh, uh, and and there's videos of him making making the odorous costumes. But once he's odorous, he's odorous. And I said, so Dave, you're gonna break character. He goes, well, they can try. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Did he bring his uh, Schween? Oh yeah, it's he's got it on. Is it loaded? Uh, I don't. I, I I can't tell. I don't really know. It's very large and bulky, so it may be. Would you mean you, his real dick or uh, the the, uh, the mechanism? No, the mechanism. What okay. was it? The uh, would, would you take a shot of jizz from uh, the fake apparatus? I don't, I don't know. I don't really. I, I, I don't. A lot know. of people would consider it an honor. Yeah, I know. I'm not one of those people, though. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> there. Well, yeah, that's um, him. Uh, but, all right. That's so funny. Him without his makeup. That's on. weird. That's that's Dave, God. but we're gonna meet Odorous. Looks like Laszlo a little bit in that shot. <laughs> okay, we'll take a break and we'll get Odorous in here. All right, righty-o. Cool. Opie and Anthony. Hey. Of course, you know that. Yay. They ran enough uh, sweepers telling you that. Yeah. Walking down the hall is Odorous. Is he gonna From be a? I try to talk oh to him. Oh my god! I try to talk to him as Dave because we saw him without the costume on. There's a picture that we took. Yeah. And I go, hey, <laughs> could you just talk to me as Dave for a second? Because I've never met you. He goes, yeah. <laughs> but then he never talked to me as Dave. This is just silly. <laughs> Look, this is just silly. Why is it silly? <laughs> Dude, he's like his big dick thing. <laughs> Odorous is walking oh down the hall god. from Guar. Look what's flopping, Anthony. I see it. His schween. Yes. Wow, it takes him a long time to walk with that big schween swinging yeah, from yeah. side to side. That's what it is. The big area. There he is. Odorous making his appearance wow. on the Open Anthony Show for the first time. Oh, Odorous. <laughs> wow, holy shit. This isn't Jeopardy. <laughs> no, no, no. They told me I was going to be on Wheel of Fucking Fortune tonight. No, no, this is the Open Anthony Show. There we go. Show. Wow. <laughs> You're taking a load off. <laughs> wow. You guys mind if I masturbate? No. Free, I don't uh, want to blow up any equipment in here. <laughs> you can we do whatever you want. On this? Uh, yeah. Oh, actually, I was watching this. Look at that little bitch. <laughs> yes, there's a little midget that on Maury. That little fat black bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Look at her. Go, go. We were on that show. Uh, oh, no. Yeah. Uh, Maury, well, yeah, the Springer, Jerry you're Springer. Jerry Springer. Hey, how's it going? Hey, what's up? Hey, there? Odorous. What took you guys so long to have me on the show? I don't know. We were stupid. I, I, I the think time I, is right. The time is right now. Everything happens for a reason. Yeah. And it, there's a reason why it took a while to get on this show. We don't know what that reason is. All we know is that I'm here now. Undoubtedly, I, I am here now. You cannot deny that. No, you no. are here now. I'm really digging the abs. <laughs> yeah, six pack abs. <laughs> I'm ripped. You must I'm go just the, fucking ripped. You must go to the gym every day. Oh god, I'm just like you know. Never actually. I don't work out. That's yeah. bad for you. No, Dude, no. What is your schween made of? It looks My like schween, you know. This is made out of. Uh, it looks like a pig or something. It's uh, the cuttlefish of Cthulhu. The cuttlefish. Yeah. Oh yeah, the cuttlefish of what? Of Cthulhu. Yeah. yeah. That, see, in outer space, it's a little different. <laughs> like uh, a lot of people are like, "Hey, odor it." Uh, how come you walk around with your dick hanging out? And I'm like, first of all, that is not a dick. And second of all, it's Mr. Odorous to you, punk. And third of all, in outer space, it is considered a crime to not walk around with your dick hanging oh, out. Okay? Wow. Yeah, you have to have it hanging out or you go to jail. I often will put a shoe on the end of it and use it for a third leg. It's very big, yeah. It is big. This is kind of the smaller version of it. It's not fully engorged. Actually, I haven't had a hard on in about 500,000 years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm still waking up, still kind of de thaw. I'm starting to touch myself. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly. starting, to, it's starting to fucking feel pretty good. <laughs> oh, yeah. Watch it. Oh, yeah. I like it. Are we on the radio uh, now? Yeah, yeah, believe it or not. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's great to be here. Uh, hey, all you Gore fans out there. <laughs> Uh, you were you were on Red Eye, I believe. Uh, yeah, last so I am, uh, I've been completely seduced by the uh, Fox corporate entity. Uh, I am their <laughs> new interplanetary correspondent, if ah, you will. I yeah. saw that they actually put the graphic on the bottom. Yeah, I saw planetary. actually. I was looking at the website, and uh, you know, uh, on the Compu Web uh, or the Intra, where whatever the hell that thing is. Anyway, there was my face right next to Bill O'Reilly's, and yeah. I was pretty pretty excited. Wouldn't and then to after see that. the show, he visited 
invited me in my dressing room, and we had oral sex. And then I, <laughs> oh, I, said, oh, I might have just lost my job on Fox. Hey, yeah. Odorous. Yeah, yeah. Why are you drinking coffee out of a straw? It, it takes away from your whole look. It just... It takes away from the whole quality, don't you think? That's what I'm all about, though. Yeah. Just disappointment. I'm just... <laughs> mm. <laughs> yes, Kitty. Yeah, yes, Odorous is drinking coffee. Hey, Odorous, we uh, we have a guy, Erock, who wants to be sprayed in the face by that uh, that piglet thing. Yeah, I don't know from if it, it takes a little while for me to get the load going. Oh, oh really? Shit. Yeah, I mean, I could probably... If we got a, an intern, maybe, you can start working it. You want to? Well, hey, we can maybe work in the work in the gherkin and get a couple jerks in, or would Evan do that for us? Yeah. Can Bring we get Evan. Connie Chung in here to like maybe suck on it? Connie Chung, you're kind of putting me on the spot here. You know, yeah, I don't know really. if I'm really. I just blew a huge load downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Oh, anyway, jerking it I, off. I love how he's got the paint on. <laughs> do, 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 do. Oh hey, this well, is anyway. Adam. He's got a Metallica T-shirt on. Is that all right? What? Yeah, they they, they what? What? Would you suck me off? <laughs> I mean, oh, give a shot. <laughs> Try to jerk on it here for a sec. All Touch right. it. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! <Yeah. laughs> oh, Evan, hold on, I'll think about my mom. All right, Evan oh, is now touching. Uh, it's just not working. You're not doing. Get out of here! You made me sick. You didn't like that. <laughs> what is it? He's not pleasuring me like he should, like Connie yeah. Chung would. Well, how about Erock? God, I'll let anyone get here and suck my this dick. This guy's a giant fan. I'll get on. <laughs> yeah. This is Graham, our new intern, and he's stroking the piglet sheen. Hanging from orders. <laughs> it's not working. We need more interns in here. Come on, get over here. Well, God damn, get a, get a fire hose on it and kind of try right, to cut off working the, oh, the now, like Get Tickle the balls. Oh, he's grabbing, oh, yeah. he's grabbing uh, the balls now. I, oh, I have shit myself. That's what we got to go now. <laughs> We're starting to get something happening. Oh, just stop. It's uh, a failure. It ain't happening. What is going on? I thought they left the Velveteen <laughs> Touch of a dandy fire. <laughs> hey, uh, E-Rock, why don't you give it a try? How many people can... No, E-Rock will, um, will... I'm not good at this. Just maybe kick it. Yeah, kick, give it a kick. Kick it. Kick it. Go ahead. Oh, <laughs> oh shit, oh. E-Rock. Jesus, E-Rock, you're a little yeah. angry, aren't you? Guys, I mean, come on. Can we talk about something else except my fucking cock? Yeah, yeah right, if it wasn't so, oh. like, right out there. Well, look, I'll tell... All right, he's how, hiding his uh, his his cock. How long how long have you been uh, with Guar? Uh, I am uh, I am the assessment. original. Yeah, the prototypical, the uh, the one who has been there. I mean, we are actually been together as a rock group band for over twenty five million years. But you see, right. we only were dethawed recently. I don't know if you're up with your Guar lore. But we were trapped in Antarctica in the frozen ice, so the story goes. Uh, Sleazy P. Martini, our manager, was on the run from the IRS. He was shot down over Antarctica. Wow. He stumbled into our tomb at the precise moment that the ozone had burned a layer hole through the ozone layer because all of those poofy hairspray bands like Britney Fox were using too much of that stuff on their big poofy rock and roll wigs. And also, Brent Michaels is bald. He, I was so glad when he got hit with that piece of scenery. I thought that was fucking hilarious. But anyway, um, what was I talking yeah. about? Oh, yeah, and then we woke up and Sleazy was like, what a great band. What's the name of your band? And I looked back at him and I said, Gah. and he's like, that's not going to fit on a t-shirt. I was like, can we go with Guar? Uh, yeah, and it's been uh, 25 years of rock and roll. Uh, I was trying to think of the right I word for it that wouldn't be too self-insulting. Uh, Devastation, mayhem, chaos, I, carnage. These I are all things just, that apply to Guar. I was just asking that because I was wondering if ever there was a time where you could actually trace your abs when you did that. <laughs> no, absolutely not. I'm completely out of shape. It's against my religion to exercise. Oh, what happened, when, what happened to, uh, Adam Carolla last was night? Well, I mean, was I was just funnier than he was, and I don't think he liked it. Was he being I really an don't. I mean, I, he came on the show. The first thing he did to get me all, you know, mad at him, not mad so much because, like, I, you know, uh, being an intergalactic celebrity, you know, I've seen all this stuff before. You know, I've partied with the Pope. You know, I've licked OJ's poop shoot. I've done coke <laughs> all over the place. But, you know, Adam Carolla, I actually had a little bit of respect for him because of the man show. I thought, you know, that was pretty good with the chicks with the tits jumping up and down on the trampoline. Sure. So what does he do? He comes in there. The first thing he says is, nah. 
I'm more of a Slipknot fan. <laughs> like, dude, Slipknot, yeah, they got a great drummer, they're an awesome band, but it's just a bunch of dudes dressed up in monster costumes. <laughs> you know, like Lordy or, you know, whatever. It's like, with Guar, you're getting the real thing. <laughs> right, really, right. something. So I don't he, know what it is, so but that, it's real. That pissed you off? Uh... Well, it didn't really piss me off, but, you know, I was kind of, you know, I just said something about, like, they were talking about the U.S. Open, and I, I decided to go for it. I made a comment about couldn't get past the fuzzy balls and you know and right then he's like this dude is funnier than i am he, he accepted it and then he started talking about other stuff and you know they had him in hollywood like at one point during the conversation when i figured out the screen on the wall was actually a screen on the wall i actually thought he was in a little box for a while but then he was like I was trying to like establish rapport with him and he just did the he was sitting in front of a picture of the hollywood sign and he just did this like, uh, like I'm from Hollywood yeah, yeah, or something. Like, right, hey, right, look where right, I am. Right. It's like, ooh, uh, yeah, I'm from Antarctica, okay, <laughs> Adam. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what's up with him. We didn't really. It's not like we, you know, got into it with switchblades oh, okay. in the alley. But uh, no, Steve was always, yeah. Steve I was just, you know, let's. I was just funnier than you, Adam. I was funnier than you. Yeah. And when I made the comment about Blanche having a stroke. Everybody <laughs> lost it in there. <laughs> now, what's your uh, what's your political views? I, I hear oh, you. Politicians crucified. Uh, we will draw up the contracts of laws for the new world on their skinned butt flesh. <laughs> yeah, the only reason we have politicians in outer space is so we can crucify them. Oh, in interesting uh, concept. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, like, they're pretty useless, aren't they? I mean, <laughs> you, you, <laughs> it's pretty funny, too. You're a little more left uh, or right leaning. Uh, you or... know, a lot of people try to get me, like, like, Odorous, what's your political view? Are you left wing? Are you right, right wing? Do you even have a wing? Is it a chicken wing? You know, I would have to say, as much as I'm a liberal and a progressive and a creative thinker, the uh, the right wing embraces concepts I'm more familiar with, like like war and disease. Uh, they didn't do anything for AIDS, really. Uh, they started two wars uh, that are just going nowhere. Uh, I guess we're running out of Iraq right now. We're trying to fight these guys in... Uh, I mean, have you seen like the way the spiders look over there? They're huge, those things that live on the camel scrotums. Yeah, yeah. I mean, how are we going to beat these people? These, these things are... like They live in the Taliban's genitals or something like that. It's like, there's no way we're going to win. But anyway, uh, yeah. Yeah, politicians, they suck. I mean, just elect odorous. Actually, my manager, Sleazy P. Martini, uh, he is quite the uh, inter international uh, political figure. He's kind of the man behind the scenes, pulling the strings and controlling the porno and the crack industries, mm -hmm. which is good for me, because I love porno and crack, and uh, I love the hell out of them, really. What, what, do, you, what do you do when you're not uh, performing? Oh, uh, lay around in a drug-induced stupor, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, I drink a lot, <laughs> a lot. You have to drink a lot to be in this band. Yeah, apparently. Well, I, I just mean like, you know, when when you're not in the band, you're I just golf. mellow. You golf. I golf. Yeah, I, it's you know, a lot of people are like, oh, it's golf, you know. And but I do use Fuzzy Zeller's decapitated head as a ball. So <laughs> how did he get managed to save his career anyway after he made that horrible remark about, uh, about the Tiger? Chicken, like, yeah. Play a buffet with chicken and watermelon and whatever else those people eat. How come he got away with that, but Jimmy the Greek got busted for saying, look at that monkey run? I mean, come on. There's a double standard here. How come Michael Richards gets to come back and do the new Seinfeld when he said that stuff about sticking a fork up that dude's butt? I mean, what, you know, come uh, on. I th yeah, but... You know, in the in the in the Seinfeld context, I guess it's uh, fine. Well, I think it kind of adds more to Kramer's character to find out that he's a racist and a homophobe. You know, it's like, yeah, I'm kooky, I'm wacky, I hate gay people. <laughs> <laughs> Odorous from Guar and he's dripping today. coffee on know, his uh, like, on his coddle face. I was coffee. freaking up at like five in the morning, still like babbling insanely after my triumphant red eye appearance and like i've been going non-stop ever since yeah this this coffee's pretty good hey Did would you, you look in the mirror and just laugh your ass off when you first put that on <laughs> well you know i look in the mirror and base i see perfection i see everything yeah, yeah, yeah. that i want to be and then i paint my six-pack abs on <laughs> girls have actually thought that was real before so that tried to paint a bigger penis on me but <laughs> no real need for that well that's uh that's good you never tripped over those uh, balls, did you? Oh, no, On many stage? times. Yeah. Oh, geez. Yeah, these are the brain balls. 
Yeah, yeah there's yeah, a we lot see the going brain on balls. down there. There's the, yeah. brains. People have accused me of thinking with my penis. So you got the brain on occasion, there, right? and so, the balls. Yeah, see, it's like. I had to have my brain removed from my skull because it was too obvious a target. Even though my, <laughs> my, my, I had skull surgery to remove a tiny piece of brain that was still stuck up there. It's like basically, I figure if they can't get at my brain, then they can't kill me. Not that it's a really important organ anyway, but I decided I would get them closer to my penis. And they just right. kind of keep the operation going a little bit better. <laughs> yeah, in outer space, a lot of people actually have their faces right here so they can eat their own shit. <laughs> I'm serious. Let it be known he just points to his taint ball. Is a, oh, course, a face yeah. is a taint in outer space. I do miss outer space. Hey, what do you think of the what's going on in music these days? Well, it's crap, isn't it? I mean, I, you know, I'm so sick of hearing these bands, especially in metal circles, that are just rehashed, you know, Slayer riffs, basically. I mean, I think when Dime... Bless his heart. When when that idiot in Columbus blew his head off, uh, you know that was a really sad day. I think uh, right that that day, I think I saw just how screwed up and fucked up the music industry really is. Because the very next day, the uh, house, of, I mean the uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland, Ohio, was having a big induction ceremony. You know, and if if, if they had any respect or they knew anything about modern music, they would have canceled the goddamn thing and shown Dime the respect and love that he deserved. He was one of the most influential, awesome guitar players since freaking Jimi Hendrix. But uh, when he died, it just really seemed to cause an incredible rash of uncreativity and just just really shitty, bad, overly compressed. I mean, I mean, bands like Nickelback. I mean, I know there's always been a lot of crappy music out there, but it's yeah. just like more so than ever. But one thing I can say about all the shit music out there is that it certainly makes us look better, that's for sure. <laughs> and one thing, another thing I can't stand are these self-appointed divas, these these useless, uh, my dad works for the studio, you know, uh, surgically augmented, fake titty, <laughs> no-talent bitches who, like, put out one song with them caterwauling about how much their fucking pussy hurts, and next thing you know, <laughs> they've got this big, I'm a diva, I'm a diva, I'm a diva my ass, I would like <laughs> Nothing better than to see a wild pig chowing down on Christine Aguilera's disease twat. <laughs> That's what I think about music. It sucks. There are some good bands out there, and we will be going out with Lamb of God, a uh, oh, job for wow. a cowboy in Red Court on a gigantic tour coming up this fall to pump our new album, Lost in Space, which is undoubtedly the greatest score album that we have made Lost since... In space. Since the last Squire album that right, we did, of, yes. of course. Now, what happened to the rest of the guys in the band? Well, I, like, why, why are you the last uh, remaining? I get, I get, you know, basically, they, they kind of freeze up like a deer in the headlights when they get on TV and stuff. They're still a little bit enamored of show business. And I'm just, uh, you might have not noticed, but I have this thing called diarrhea of the mouth. And uh, <laughs> actually, diarrhea will start coming out of my mouth soon. That's why I have toilet paper installed behind my teeth. So it's like, it's like kind of shitting and wiping at the same time. Hopefully that won't happen happened today but uh, why what happened, why, to, what happened to the yeah. other guys like the original members oh they die <laughs> they die or they you know they have drug overdoses uh they're torn apart by dinosaurs or or even uh, like in the case of joey slutman one of our original singers uh, they go insane yeah uh, and run off down the street uh, the hurling pieces of armor over their shoulder only to be run over by a bus you know, basically, now that we've solidified Odorous, Beefcake, Ballsack, Flattus, and Jismack, and of course, the Slaves of Guar, uh, combining to make an entertainment juggernaut of Goliath proportion. And, uh, you know, we're here to get rid of all the crap, play some fucking heavy metal, chop off some world leaders' heads, core out Lindsay Lohan's disease twat, <laughs> and, you know, that's, and that's what we're all, that's how we roll. That's what you do. That's yeah, what we yeah, do. Yeah. Are you, uh, <laughs> that, that looks very inconvenient to be on stage with. Oh, no, it's, I mean, this yeah. is not a fashion statement. This is, uh, this is protection. You know, like, I do shows, and the next thing I know, uh, Sawborg Destructo has descended from the heavens, flown in through the roof, and is trying to saw my scrotum off. Right, you know? yes. Rod Stewart never had to deal with that kind no, of stuff. No, no, he didn't. Granted, he might have had to deal with having 12 gallons of semen pumped out of his stomach. <laughs> yes, we did hear you know, that. I, that might have been my semen, actually.
actually. But, you know, he never had, like, Gorgor chewing on his head. You know, that's the, a lot of people are like, oh, Guar, it's just a big act. All you do is play these these stupid fucking songs and dress up like monsters <laughs> from outer space. I'm like, yeah, and? <laughs> but I will put my band up against any of them. I defy Carrie King from Slayer to play a ripping solo while there is a dinosaur chewing on his penis. <laughs> yes. It's kind of, it, it would be kind of rough. It is. I mean, you know, so I dress like, like this to protect myself from my various enemies, but you will notice, yes, my dick is hanging out. It's against the law on my home world to ever cover my phallus. Well, why would you want to? That I just, know. It's uh, got to breathe. Yeah, I've got to, like, slough off the old skin. It's kind of like a rattlesnake, you know? Yeah, it's, it's quite a disgusting. <laughs> what, what about, what about uh, your your audience uh, over the years? Any changes there? Uh, yeah, it's really, really interesting. Um, Guar started uh, pretty much in, in the first couple of years of Guar. We were still thawing out. Uh, the music was fairly primitive. Um, so we got uh, kind of got our start in the punk rock scene. Now, as we uh, finally came to room temperature, uh, we got a little more dexterous with our fingers, and we started playing more heavy metal. We moved into the heavy metal uh, kind of zone, but we took all our fans with us from the punk rock zone. Well, now what you've got, after 25 years of this never-ending plateau, that is my career, um, we have got whole generations of Guar fans coming in. Like, for instance, last year, it was Guar Dude, his child, and his mother, all wearing Guar suits covered in blood, begging for me to blow a filthy disease load of odorous <laughs> semen right in their faces. The old lady was loving it. So our demographic is slowly spreading, very, very slowly. Like most bands, they'll come out, they'll do okay, they'll put out a couple of hit records, and they'll slowly decline until finally they're playing the state fair. With Guar, it's been like a never-ending, slightly inclined plateau. <laughs> Every year it gets a little bit bigger. Now that I'm on your show, oh, yeah. I can only think that, like, uh, you know, it's right around the corner, whatever that is, but uh, for Guar to finally bust out and do everything that we know Guar can do, I mean, it doesn't matter if we get fat or old. Right. You know, I'll just paint another six-pack abs. <laughs> I might even have eight-pack abs. You can paint as many abs as you want on that. I could, I could, yeah, I, and I really can't even paint. <laughs> So it's family entertainment now is what you're saying. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's 25 years of good family entertainment yeah, as yeah. long as your family are a bunch of pig-fucking sodomites. <laughs> uh, that that has to get really hot. Uh, no, 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 no. I mean, I, and... When I was born, I was dipped into a pool of lava. So it's just oh, like, okay. yeah, it doesn't really bug me. That's easy. It's got an answer for everything. And the shoulder, I'm trying to see what they are. They're like skulls, skulls or something. Oh, okay, cool. I, I hear he's a big U2 fan. Yeah, a lot of people are like, Odorous, why are you such a fag? <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know. Actually, it's a funny story. Um, U2 actually invited me to a show one time. They'd seen a copy of Phallus in Wonderland, on a, a movie we actually got nominated for a Grammy. <laughs> that was hilarious. <laughs> but uh, we got nominated for this fucking Grammy, and U2 like, invited, wanted to use one of the characters from the show from the movie in their big uh, zoo tour. Right. So we went up to D.C. and we saw the show and then they put me in this room to meet with Bono and while I was in the room I just, all I did was rag on Bono and how fat he looked because he was cramming his face with tartar sauce filled donuts the whole show. Then I looked up and saw the security camera and realized that probably Bono was in the room right next to me going that fucking wanker as he just crammed tartar sauce filled donuts into his big fat corner. Oh, no child molesting Irish fuck face. <laughs> Can you sing a U2 song for us? Very angry. Oh yeah. Give, um, give us a little see, song. Uh, give us some uh, U2. In a little while, surely you'll be mine. In a little while, you'll be there. That's what he sang to Joey on his deathbed. <laughs> In a little while, if you hadn't snorted all that carbona spot <laughs> remover, maybe your brain would still be there. <laughs> I'm so fucking rich. <laughs> yeah, well, I get is. pretty annoyed at that band, actually. I, maybe I don't like him that much. <laughs> uh, he does tend to do a lot of uh, good for the for the world. And I hate Africa that. It's like, and AIDS. And, we don't, we don't want to stop AIDS. What There's too guy. many people out there anyway. I mean, I believe people are like, Odorous, where do you weigh in on health care? I'm like, let the sick die. Call the herd. Yeah, call the freaking herd yeah. here. Come on. Yeah. 
Execution for, for parking tickets. This is my idea. Oh, that would be nice. Yeah. yeah. Are but you an Obama fan? There it is. I don't know. I guess he's kind of funny. One thing I have noticed about him is that he's black. Wow. And that is a big change from the way things usually go. And I, I tell you, it's funny. Like, everyone in America is like, oh, whoa, we got a black president. I'm like, you fucking dolts. The whole rest of the world has had black presidents, female presidents, Ecuadorian. I believe the president of Ecuador is a black Ecuadorian woman or something like that. It's like, yeah, but it's, it's not exactly a groundbreaking decision, but you know, I must say everyone's starting to rag on Obama right now. and He's starting to look positively harried. And I just want everyone to remember Bill Clinton's first year when he was doing that whole gaze in the military thing. Yeah, He's off to a shaky start. But give him a break. We absolutely, you know, it's just like so funny to me the way the conservatives are just piling on. They're like, as soon as he does anything, they're like, oh, he's fucking up. Oh, everybody hates him. Oh, it's a disaster. Oh, no. We need to get Rush Limbaugh in here immediately. Rush, get your face out of that tray of Oxycontin. We're talking to a monster. We really are. It's very frightening. And it's a big fan of Obama. Oh, those so were, that's. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, he likes, likes the Obama. Oh, of course. Others. Yeah, yeah. Any, I don't mind him. I mean, fantastic. I've never met him. So, I don't know. I don't think he wants to meet me. I love I love it because his hand is always in my fucking pocket. Yeah, did you see him uh, kill that fly? Yeah. That was pretty, I mean. You liked that? I liked that. Yeah. I'm not really interested in swatting flies, but I thought it was that was pretty cool. I thought it was a good start. Good start. Now we need yeah. you to kill something else. Barack. <laughs> What uh? What uh, what are those worms coming out of your um face? Yes, they're worms, and I'll tell you one thing about my worms: that they're high. Yeah. Yeah, they're high. I'm really like I'm not on drugs, like right now, uh, but yeah, from when I was before, they are. And if I wanted to catch, if you wanted to catch a little buzz here, we could throw one in the bong. Wow, they would uh, light up and not uh, really very well. Buzz, uh, I was thinking it'd be more like we could just drink the bong water. That's kind of handy to have. And and you're very like masculine looking, aside from the fishnet stockings <laughs> well, that's that you're kinda, wearing. Uh, what what is that? It's just a peek into my my artistic soul. I mean, I'm not afraid to dress up like a woman. Show your feminine side. Yeah, I mean, I'm not afraid to tell people that I have a vagina instead of a butthole, and I oh, crap really? out of it. Out of the back, you have a vagina. I got a vagina butthole. Yeah, it kind of does double duty, if you will. <laughs> double duty. <laughs> yeah, I heard, a great, I heard a great joke the other day. You might have heard this one. Two guys are walking down the street. Pigeon shits on this dude. He says to his friend, hey, give me a piece of toilet paper. His friend says, why? It's already a half a mile away. <laughs> <laughs> a monster, but he's telling jokes. Yeah. I'm a funny monster. <laughs> yeah. They seem to like me over at Fox. Everyone was yeah. coming in last night and sucking on my cock. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> what about, what about they, uh, what, were they what were they talking about last night that you got I couldn't really in? tell because my dick was so buried in their mouths, but uh, <laughs> no, Greg and I are great buddies. Greg Gutfeld, uh, the host yeah. of Red Eye. Uh, he used to be a Maxim editor. He used to do stuff. He's got a really hot wife from Russia, and uh, he is a huge Guar fan. That uh, He's the guy that got Guar on Fox, and I, I think it's really, really, really cool. Yeah, I'm doing Red Eye tonight. Oh, yeah, that's right. They're, they're, great, they're great people oh, over yeah, there. They're a pisser, man. They are a lot of fun. They are a lot of fun. It's like, uh, it's funny because, you know, Guar is such a proven commodity. We have so many fans, you know, we're really, we've always been the very cutting edge of the underground metal scene and uh but we really have never gotten to that super big level that we deserve to be i mean i want to see guar movies i want to see guar video games i want to see guar really get everything that we deserve and for our fans especially and things like red eye really help and things like being on this show of course guys and is a big uh, help for guar and it's very awesome that we're here today maybe guar endorsing things like campbell soup and stuff like that you could be on uh, like a soup commercial actually i've got uh, endorsed i've just signed a contract with the defense department and i am endorsing uh, a new cluster bomb. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that we're going it, to, it, it's a really good one. It's designed to kill children. Uh, oh, basically right. what happens is like when you drop it, it scatters presents everywhere and yeah. they explode. <laughs> hey, what do you think of Michael Jackson? They're burying him today. Oh, right? uh, it's a oh, tragedy. There's... It's a tragedy. Yeah. Uh, it's a tragedy, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. But oh. I can tell everyone, you know, it, it would be a tragedy if Michael Jackson was indeed dead. But oh. I can, I have inside information that he staged his own death and is at this moment in Antarctica with the rest of Guar getting ready to make a triumphant return to the stage this fall on the Guar Tour. Wow. Yeah.
So I would go to <laughs> yeah. every I would yeah. go to every yeah. Guar show yeah. then. Yeah. Yeah. You better. He's going to be we're going to be moonwalking gonna... and we're going to be shooting uh, drugs into our neck. Uh, we're going to find out if that nose is real and if there's a hole there, I'm going to stick my dick in it or at least wow. the very front part of it. Yeah, the cuddlefish. The cu- the cuddlefish with my deadly cuddlefish, slit yeah. slut. Cuddlefish. Well, I just came up with that slit slut. Well, that thing sh- uh, shoot jizz today or what? No, uh, it's not. I'm sorry, no guys. Today? He doesn't have any jizz. I have to start masturbating at least a week in advance in order to get my nut. <laughs> I could run it downstairs and maybe have a bus run over it a few times. Yeah, there you go. Uh, don't you that? have any oh. fat, ugly Korean women around here? That might work. Uh, with back uh, pimples and <laughs> knee hair. <laughs> you scared that woman. <laughs> Yeah, oh that god, woman yeah, women are afraid of me. The they can't handle my girth she and my fake away. six pack. She ran away. <laughs> fake six pack. <laughs> we uh, love the fake six. So. Is okay. there a, is there a uh, a woman in your oh, life? Yeah. Uh, well, I, Odorous is a confirmed bachelor. Oh, uh, you know, but that doesn't mean there's not a woman in my life. There are all kinds of women. In, I, I like to think of it more like Odorous is more like in their lives. Like ah. my dick is in their butt, kind of. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I've got some girlfriends, this and that, and most of them. Actually, my current girlfriend is a dead dog. Oh, that's uh, handy, actually. You don't yeah, have to Pookie much the lip. Wonder Dog. Uh, that's the first song on. We were hanging out with Phil from uh, Pantera, and like, um, someone asked him about Guar, and he's like, "Man, Guar, man, they suck, man, man. They got a song called I'm in Love with a Dead Dog, <laughs> man." That, what a, that's a great name for a song. <laughs> lot, I don't get it. A lot it. of jealousy out there. Yeah, right. a lot of, between Adam Carolla yeah. and uh, Phil yeah. and uh, who else? I don't know. That bitch who got her teeth knocked out and her fingertips chopped off. <laughs> you know? <laughs> the model? Yeah. She had a nice wreck. They, I think they identified her by her implants. <laughs> yeah. They did, by they the did. serial number on her implant. Yeah, That's how yeah. they identified her, for real. Are you shitting me? Nope, that came out yesterday. Wow. He is right. That's so She right. was kind of weird looking. You know, she had that kind of, like, hot look, but, like, kind of inbred at the same time, you know? Yeah, not wrong with that, though. No, no. I'm, I'm supporting inbreeding, definitely. Yeah, yeah. You, uh, I, I was looking at a picture of you know somebody who, uh, I guess says they're you. That's some some guy named uh, Dave. Oh something. yeah, that guy's so annoying. He he, he really um, doesn't look like somebody that would. <laughs> he's an <laughs> asshole. Pull, pull he goes off. around everywhere telling people that he's me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and if I could ever get in the same room as that motherfucker, I'd choke the life out of him. Brocky, you better watch out. Odorous is after you. See, that just looks like a normal dude. <laughs> it looks that like looks a... Like... What a queer... What has he got a thing of baked beans with him? Yeah. Look at him. He's on the computer with his laptop. <laughs> See, I'm looking at a guy. It just looks like a normal dude. You'd hang out with, have a few beers. He and... looks gay to me. He doesn't look normal at all. But well, that's you. No, it's not. I don't, feel, I don't, don't believe you. <laughs> I don't believe Hi, you. Hi, honey. Hot chicks are here. Oh, look, they're they're walking right by, not even really looking. Yeah, they don't want to. If they look, they'll be they'll be hooked. One not, look, you're hooked. My dick is up your butt. So what? How I, I, I guess a lot of uh, guys come into the shows uh, mostly. Yes, yeah, a lot of gay men love <laughs> Guar man. because of my long-standing tradition of actually uh, orally servicing my fans after the show. That's nice. A lot of bands won't give their fans suck jobs, but yeah. you know that's always been a thing that Guar did for people. And and uh, I want everyone out there to know that if you want to come back after the show, stand out by the trash dumpster in a puddle of puke and get your dick sucked by odorous chirungus. <laughs> I don't care if it's covered in scabs and herpes. I don't even care if you come or not. I just want your dick in my mouth. Uh, That's it, a lot of cocks, too. A lot. Uh, yeah. The uh, the audience likes getting involved in the shows, too. I've oh, seen, yeah. And this uh, is a know, big thing for, for Guar. Getting by the monster is like fucking, you know. Oh, yeah, we're nothing without our fans. And uh, there's something about Guar that kind of makes everybody equal. Like, when you're spraying your pus and your phlegm and your catarrh and your bile, oh, and your blood. Blood, yes. Blood, like, blood. after the first song, everybody is, like, bright red. So it kind of, like, is a way of breaking down society's barriers. That's uh, the way I like to look at it. You know it. something? I never would have looked at that. You but know, it's true. Like it that, really but... levels the playing field when everyone is covered with syphilitic semen. Yeah, it's <laughs> syphilitic. It certainly does. <laughs> 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 Are we hitting it off? Yeah, I think, I think so. we're doing all right. Awesome. I think you're, I think you're, you're all right, me. man. I understand you had my uh, buddy Al Jorgensen up here one time. 
That fucking oh, guy yeah. could tell a story. Oh, I got a good Al Jurgensen story. First time we we met Al, he was uh, working for us on Scum Dogs of the Universe. And, uh, you know, Guar was sitting there in the studio, all of a sudden heard this uh, motorcycle. And all of a sudden, the door to the control room smashed open. Al drove his motorcycle into the control room, wrecked it into the wall, got off the fucking thing, went over to the console, laid out a mirror, spelt the word Fugazi in cocaine, and then snorted the entire thing. He didn't even leave me an eye. <laughs> then he went on to work for three days straight, mixing one song, after which he passed out underneath the console. Now that is a professional. <laughs> that's, that's rock. Didn't he fucking ostrich? That was the story he, he told us on, the, on our show, something right? like fucking an ostrich, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah they in broke the into the zoo in Amsterdam, Amsterdam and one of his dudes right. fucked an ostrich. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Love that. Yeah, Love that. But see, the thing is, what they didn't understand is that in Amsterdam, there's no need to break into the zoo to fuck an ostrich. No, you could probably do it uh, right there on the uh, street. Yeah, I mean, there's a whole street dedicated yeah, to it. We, we got a lot of Guar fans on the phones, and I don't know if we're going to be able to get headphones on that uh, ridiculous... Well, you could just... Re yeah, they, they blow up. Yours. Um uh, but we got Josh from Virginia. He wants to know why you guys, Guar, were banned in Richmond, Virginia. Well, what happened was it was something to do with my dick hanging out. And this is what happens over and over again. People don't buy. The police will not buy the defense that it's a, a fish. That's what we stuck <laughs> with for many. My lawyer actually said, just say it's a fish. And that, that worked for a while. I was arrested in North Carolina for the dissemination of obscenity back in the 90s, and uh, we actually had to go to trial for this thing, and I shit you not, the judge's name, this has nothing to do with the question, but it's just funny, the judge's name was Richard Boner. <laughs> yeah, and on the, and I'm not kidding, on the docket behind me that day in court was a gang of criminal circus midgets. <laughs> So my dick has talk, brought me a lot of places. We were not really banned in Richmond. What happened was everyone was just terrified to do a show because what typically happens is the ABC is always trying to shut down clubs yeah. and for some ridiculous reason. I mean, they're supposed to be the, you know, the alcoholic beverage thing. You know, they're supposed to help people get drunk. Right. But anyway, so they basically used Guar as an excuse to shut down some clubs that they wanted to shut down. So for about three or four years, we didn't get to play in Richmond, but it wasn't much of a ban. We just started, after a while, we were just like, you know, maybe we should just start playing and see what happens. And, uh, you know, nobody arrested us, so we're, we're good again. We got actually banned from Canada for like nine years, and the way they did that is they just, they lied to us about where it was, and we just couldn't find the fucking place. <laughs> and that's pretty bad. I mean, Canada's pretty big. Yeah, yeah. yeah Let's go exactly. to Footer. And Footer <laughs> on the phone. He's a regular to the show. And uh, Footer, you might be able to Yo, hear it through the headphones over up, there. What's up, boys? What's up, Footer? Hey, real quick, yeah, I went to a Guar show. It, it was a fucking while ago, probably like uh, probably eight years ago. And one of the chicks that you used to feed to your fucking monster, I ended up fucking banging her and her girlfriend for like the entire weekend afterwards. So thanks to Guar and their disgusting show. Bang, a threesome. Nice. nice. Yeah, it's great. We actually, we had a, a thing uh, it's called the World Maggot, this giant worm that lives under the drums, and uh, we would sacrifice <laughs> women to it, and the sex executioner would uh, would help them through there, but uh, it was really funny. He would, like, he was such a pervert. He would, like, get inside of it, and as the girls were, like, being passed to the back of the stage, he would basically, like, molest them <laughs> underneath the drum roster. <laughs> we would see these chicks come staggering out, you know, come glad and dizzy. Uh, they'd have to crawl through this maggot. Yeah, and, and there, was like a dude, there was like a dude inside there waiting for him with his dick hanging out uh, saying, basically, you're never going to get out of here unless you blow me. That's perfect. Oh, uh, yeah, it worked oh, pretty good. Fucking a. <laughs> we're pretty good. <laughs> That's just like going to you, uh, uh, a U2 it, show. Yeah. 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 <laughs> fucking A, man. That actually, I could actually hear him. I think. Oh, yeah, okay. All right. Yeah. Odorous. <laughs> <laughs> What's <laughs> your price for flight? He's singing 80s music. <laughs> anyway, I just while everyone is laughing, I just want to take this opportunity to plug Guar's yes. new album, Lost in Space. We debuted on the top 100 for the first time, debuting at 96. We won't <laughs> stop until we get all the way to 94. <laughs> hey, we can play a song off the new Guar yeah! album. What do you want to hear? Let us slay? Yeah! We just did a video for this. Yeah. And uh, I have no idea what it's going to look like, but I'm pretty sure that I'm in it.
<laughs> I, I should hope so. All right. Um, should we say goodbye to, to Odorous? Yeah, we're going really to be I'm about mean, done with this shit. Well, we're going to play the song yeah, now. Oh, uh, okay. Song. What? what are you? It's your guys' show. I'll stay all day. I, I think this was a, a perfect first appearance. Yeah. You, you, oh, you, and I, you, I, I, I want you to leave with them wanting more there, Do you Otis. think that maybe uh, you can come back with me? <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been trying to get on our show? I know we've oh, said no months. probably a dozen. Uh, months, years maybe. I don't know. But all I can oh, say well. is, you know, you guys let us on unlike some people named Howard Stern. <laughs> <laughs> well, he misses out there. I know. Yeah. I mean, uh, am I not erudite? Sensual. Yes. My voice has almost a caramello quality. You, yes. It's you also very, sound very good. He sounds like Ozone from the old days, Ed. He a also sounds like, like uh, Jesse Ventura. Yeah, I can go with the Jewish thing. I can talk like an old dandified fop. <laughs> and I can also rock the New York shit. I'm basically completely schizophrenic. I'll be whatever you want, except uh, sober. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I would try to stay drunk on my coffee, I say, yeah. yeah. Mm. All right, Let Us Slay. It's uh, the latest song from Guar's new album. What is it? Lust in Space? Lust in Space is out now on Metal Blade Records! want to thank Odorous for stopping by today. Hey, it's been oh, great. Guys. Oh, my oh, next what? appearance. Wait. Wow, you don't know when an out is an out, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. What were you going to say, Odorous? <laughs> I just, I, I don't know. I just, I really appreciate you guys having us on the show. You made a lot of Guar fans very happy today. And I'll uh, hopefully be seeing uh, you guys in the future. Come see us on the tour. We're playing here at Irving Plaza. I would love for you to be our guest and uh, return some of this wonderful hospitality you've shown us if today. If I could hang out in the maggot. You yeah. could Come hang out by the maggot and get raped by an old man. <laughs> you uh, keep saying thanks for having us, but you're the only one in the studio. I, I I'm know. a little confused I'm, by that. I am completely multiple personality. He's probably in contact with the rest of the guys. That kind of oh, like, oh yes, they're big fans. They're very jealous that they're not here right now. But uh, yeah, I always speak in the collective. The collective that is the mighty Guar. Right. All right, you want to set up this song? Let give, us give, slay. It the, give it, give it, give it the big intro, the big let over us, the top. Let us slay is a song all about the human's desire to embrace war as a natural means of population control. It addresses the basic hypocrisy of existence. The Ten Commandments say, "Thou shalt not kill." Yet George Bush will fry twenty people this week, even though he's not the president anymore. <laughs> anyway, uh, it's basically saying <laughs> war is great. Let us slay. He, he didn't do that as president. He killed all kinds of people, didn't oh, he? Oh yeah. Well, okay. I was thinking. Of, I was thinking the death penalty. You're People right. You're are right. done. You know, you're if right. they're worried about the death you're penalty right. here, they should try Saudi Arabia. They they behead you and publicly crucify you. Yeah, but you have to be Nigerian. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Let Us Slay from Lust in Space. Guar. <laughs> Odorous, a pleasure, man. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Instant feedback. They're all checking out your uh, your tweet. Yes, I just tweeted. Uh, Odorous has just left the studio from Guar. And I think he had a fine first appearance. I, I liked it a lot. Yes, uh, very Lust funny space monster in stores now. But uh, he got up off the chair, and uh, well, his sweaty ass pretty <laughs> much destroyed <laughs> one of the Opie and Anthony chairs in the studio. We didn't notice that um, he because he, he was sitting down in his fishnet stockings. When he got up to leave and turned around, you just saw his ass. His ass is bare. It's just a bare ass. Uh, and it was sweating profusely because that chair now has um, odorous sweat ass stains. Ass sweat. Ass you know, sweat. He doesn't look as manly when he's walking away from you. <laughs> no, no, no. Like, Not as frightening monster. No, like, no, 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 we no. should have somebody sniff the sweaty chair. Well, where's E-Rock? Where's E-Rock? E-Rock hasn't done shit for us lately. Oh, E-Rock! Oh, E-Rock! E-Rock! E-Rock. Sniff Odorous's chair. <laughs> Tell us what the sweaty, um, odorous chair smells like. Now look look at the imprint and see right where the bung would have been. Yeah, pick right a good spot on the chair, right will you? Right where his coolie hole would be. Okay. And give it a good sniff. It just not, smells like not bad. damp. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Not bad. Wow, how about that? Oh. Odorous isn't very odorous. No, not really. He's, uh, it's like a potpourri to you, huh? Yeah, no, yeah. but it's all wet. I just put my hand it's here on the back. Oh, on the and back of the chair. Yeah. The chair is soaked. I was saying, like, wear that fucking costume, dude. Come on, under the lights of a stage? He must be sweating like a pig. Yeah, I think so. How does he not have abs? <laughs> you like the odorous interview there, E-Rock? Yeah, I'm um, not really a Guar fan, but he, he was very yeah. entertaining. Yeah. yeah, I know a few Guar fans. The Guar that. fans are like, about time, fuckers. All right, All right. relax. What do you want from us? Bastards. We didn't know he he could do good radio. 
Is this the guy that was just in the suit? <laughs> Is that him? Open the door. Yeah, <laughs> Who's Open that? the door. I want to get him on the air. This is definitely the guy, but he will not play it that way. <laughs> get him in hey, studio. Get him in studio for a second. Is that him? Hey, who's this guy? Hey, who are you, man? What's up? Guys, did you see that odorous dude in here? Wait, yeah. That dude is fucked up. I barely got out of here. I barely managed to sneak in. He's leaving now. I think I'm safe. Yeah, I think you're okay. Wait, so you're not the guy? <laughs> <laughs> That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. No, I'm just... uh. Regular old Dave Brocky, I've been uh, a Slave Pit artist. Slave Pit is the production company that has uh, that came up with Guar and has supported it and, and 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 loved it and nurtured it and cherished it for 25 years now. And this is the the 25th Jesus. year. Our freaking business has been scratching an existence out of a hostile world, but. Well, you, you've been working with Guar for 25 years. Yeah. And yeah. Odorous, right? As Odorous, yes. I, I, I would imagine at this point you know how to uh, impersonate Yeah, him. we were looking at your sweaty <laughs> That chair. is really gross. <laughs> that, that got Twittered, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and I just sit right chair. back down. And, yeah, and on Red Eye, apparently I left a really bad stain on the chair. <laughs> and then, like, the guests behind me came on. They're like, your, tea, your, uh, your thongs, like, left this stain on there. <laughs> and this chick, like, sat on it and just, like, immediately ruined her dress or something. <laughs> <laughs> Probably Impregnated or two. <laughs> We've always been got our managed to get ourselves in a lot of trouble. I remember the first time, one of the first times I came up to New York because we, you know, we were come, came from come from Richmond, Virginia. It's a really small kind of backwards little southern town. Uh, Roadrunner Records like flew me up here, and uh, we all were, you know, we were gonna go talk to Roadrunner about getting this thing. So we decided we would wear our costumes to the meeting and you know, really impress them. So we put the costumes on. We put blood all over us. We came in through the lobby, and everyone was like, "Oh my god!" We walked upstairs to Roadrunner and then sat down. On a brand new office suite of white leather couches, <laughs> oh, and destroyed them, and, and the, the meeting was just over, and we couldn't understand. Yeah. We're like, "What? What happened?" <laughs> just because you ruined their fucking couch. Just because we ruined their couches. Yeah. Also, we wouldn't sign a seven record deal. I think that had something to do with it as well. Except where yeah. you get nothing until the eighth record. <laughs> we hung in there really well. Like when we when we came out with Guar, um, we didn't want to sign a big long contract because we just saw you know it happening over and over again. Bands would sign five to seven record deals mm -hmm. and after two records you know the labels would give up on these bands but they You're would all still under they, contract yeah they would You're shelve fuck. them and yeah. we're just like we're not going to do that so the first con the first two records we did were one-offs and uh we had a lot of really interesting experience like we went to this uh this company called master from from england and uh they gave us a lot of money for one record and then all of a sudden they just disappeared like their office was empty and they weren't picking oh, up the shit. phone we're like what's going on then all these distributors started calling us from all over the world like hey where's that next quarter album and basically what they'd oh, done shit. is they'd sold guar they'd licensed two records got all the advances gave us part of it took the rest and, and buggered off and to left. new zealand Wow. wow. Yeah. Scumbags. <laughs> that learned us pretty quick. But uh, yeah. after wow, the getting first... fucked in the music business, that's a surprise, right? Ed? Yeah, that never happened. That never well, happened to we, bands. Yeah, luckily we've been on, uh, I, you know, Metal Blade is a lot like War in that they're, they're survivors. You know, mm -hmm. they've been around forever. They've yeah. always put out good music. Brian Slagle and Mike Faley and the whole crew over there. You know, we actually, uh, we've been with Metal Blade for a long time. Then for some stupid reason, we went with this other label for a little while just because they, like, had some... Uh, they were gonna like actually like the royalty rate was really good. We're like, okay, it's not a huge advance, but we're like getting forty percent royalty. So let's do this thing. First album again was great. Then it was like you're calling the thing up. It's like this number has been disconnected. <laughs> they had this huge <laughs> office here in Manhattan uh, that like within a week, like within a couple months, it went from like twelve employees to four employees <laughs> yeah. to one employee doing it out of his apartment. <laughs> and so it's just like yeah, Can't it's afford, just rife. Yeah. It's completely rife with scumbags, and it's it's overly difficult. It really is. Uh, the arts and music are so undersupported in this country. Um, it's kind of a double, a good thing in a way because yeah, the, yeah. The, the cream does rise to the top. You have to be good. You have to be dedicated if you want to get anywhere with it. Um, but it does put a stifle on a lot of creativity. But then again, you don't want it to be like Europe, where everyone is getting money from the government, and they've got this kind of like government-funded, pompous attitude. Oh, I hate the government. You know, it's just like, I hate America, and that's why I'm wearing Levi's and Nikes and watching the Tarantino movie, you know? God damn, it's uh, we, I, I, know, it's, I talk just as much as Odorous does. I don't. Know. It's great to hear uh, the whole uh, business end of it. Though, oh, of it's course. a fascinating thing. I've been uh, <laughs> with the same voice. You know? I've been like doing it for so long now that um, 
and it's always been so real. I mean, I know that sounds kind of weird, but like the artists and the musicians that do Guar really do it because they love it and because we really feel like we're fulfilling a need that society has to have, you know? And I've been waiting for somebody to do a more outrageous show than us, but nobody has. Yeah, no one's really come to the uh, table with that one. <laughs> it's all about the comedy with Guar, you know? We're yeah. not trying, obviously, not taking ourselves too seriously. And, you know, and, and people will make that mistake, you know, like, serious metalheads. Oh, yeah, they're not really from outer space. <laughs> <laughs> I've had people ask me, honestly, like, hey, um, Odorous, oh, what's the scene like in Antarctica? Yeah, <laughs> what? And I'll, so I'll go, I'll be like, oh, it's pretty bleak. Yeah, just some, like, Norwegian scientists and some penguins, you know. <laughs> pretty how, bleak. How did you know you'd be able to breathe here? <laughs> 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 All right, uh, scurry off. <laughs> so we've been like, you know, Guar has been, like, like I say, the never-ending plateau. It's like... We've always been at the cutting edge of performance rock or whatever you want to call what it is that we do. In fact, you really can't label it. It's just Guar. And, uh, but I really do feel Guar is a band that can last for hundreds of years. I mean, we will breed replacements for ourselves <laughs> yeah. and we'll just keep, you know, Guar has a lot more to do <clears throat> with Beatlemania than they do with Black Sabbath. We're a franchise. We're an idea. We're not a bunch of boring poser dudes who can't take off their rock and roll persona. When I'm done with my character, I throw my bloody suit in a costume box and, you know, and I'm Dave again. Yeah. And that has kept us very real and grounded and close to we, our fans. Now, Dave, we talk about that all the time, franchising these bands. Now, you get a little older, you find the, the next odorous. You pass you, on your cut. That's what I'm saying. You sit uh, home cut. and take a nice cut and <laughs> let those guys do all the heavy lifting. Oh, I look forward to that day. Let me tell you, I but, do. I do. I mean, but there's there's bands out there doing pretty much ju you know just that they're running out of all their members but the band continues on. Yeah, uh, you know that happens all the freaking time and uh, with Guar it, it's we're we're particularly uh, made to take advantage of that and mm -hmm. I've always just thought Guar would just be like a relentless assault. It doesn't matter if you haven't done a Guar movie or a Guar video game or even gotten to Japan yet. You're gonna one day because it's just. Wait, you, you guys know, haven't played Japan? No, we've never been to Japan. We've That's actually had up. things. You know, for, well, the biggest problem with getting to Japan is it's just really expensive. We have to <laughs> fill a shipping container full of, you know, a rubber dinosaur and all this crap. You know, <laughs> yeah, no it's not like I can just go pick up an odorous costume in downtown Tokyo. You could probably get pretty close to it, but uh, a samurai thing with. A <laughs> well, also that remember that I was telling you guys about the deal with the company that sold fake rights. Yeah, it turned out uh, we got this letter from Jimco, which is a. Uh, uh, label in Japan. They're like, we look forward to a new Gua album and big sales. We hope to bring them. <laughs> <laughs> I always thought that had something to do with the reason we never got back to Japan. <laughs> like, ah, sorry about that. <laughs> but it's like sooner or later, it's gonna crack. You know, people are just going to freaking say, you know what? Guar is just not going to stop. The guys that work for Guar, the, the guys that I'm lucky enough to have hooked up, hooked, hooked up with, you know, they're just... I mean, there's like, we got to the point that we really couldn't do anything else. This is yeah. what we do, you know? And I think Guar will go just as long as, is it still funny? It's like, Jesus Christ, they're not fucking going they're away. Not gonna go they're away. not going to go away. They're not going You away. might as well let them in. <laughs> you know, give them a TV show, give them a video game, send them to freaking Mongolia if they want. Anyway, just get them out of America. Even people who have never heard Guar have heard of Guar, which is uh, pretty amazing, you know. And uh, we were just talking about it. The, the the whole Beavis and Butthead thing was really funny. How they just loved it. Guar, Guar, Guar. That was great. That was like one of the first like kind of big things that happened to yeah. us. I remember we were like when we found out that uh, my judge wanted to uh, to do that. We were like, well, this is great. There's got it. We actually are going to get some money out of this somehow. So, <laughs> and Viacom was like, uh, no, we don't really do that. We're like, oh, come on, come on, come on. We got to get some money. They're like, well, come on up to New York. And we'll talk about it. So we went in, uh, came up to New York, went in there with our lawyer, and they're like, "Yeah, we're going to give you some money. We're going to give you point oh 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 six percent after we sell two hundred thousand copies." And here's also a free copy of the video game. Oh, okay. And we were just Great. like, "Jeez, that that was like music business one oh one right there." Unbelievable. I still have a shrink wrap copy of that game though, and that game was ridiculously difficult to play. The, what it was is like Beavis and Butthead were going to see Guar and their dog had eaten their tickets and then barfed little bits of the tickets all over town. 
and uh, you have to find the tickets. And apparently, like only I've only talked to a few. Actually, uh, John from Adrenaline, I think, actually did finish that game. So <laughs> that's hysterical. I was just coming down here to take a piss. I, I wasn't like trying to get back yeah, on the well, show, but that's cool. The, we're in the middle of a commercial. <laughs> yeah, we got to get back to. Okay. We got to get back to the commercial read. But uh, uh, David, thank you. Thank you very much for having yeah, me. I had thanks, a blast. Now that, now that we've seen you out of the suit, though, I don't know if we could ever have you back. <laughs> <laughs> we'll think about it. <laughs> no, you'll be back. Hell yeah, yeah. You had a great, awesome. great appearance. Oh, thank you, David. Thanks, had a blast, uh, David. <laughs> AKA Odorous from Guar. Uh, <laughs> hey, uh, by the way, uh, I did a quick video of uh, the Guar guy, Odorous. Yeah. Odorous Arungus. Yes, it's uh, it's up on the YouTube channel, OP Radio, but uh, Sam did a little backstage after his appearance. A little post interview. So we go to break with this. And now, backstage with ONA. Here is Primetime Sam Roberts. I'm Primetime Sam Roberts, and lead singer of intergalactic rock band Guar, Odorous Urunga, stopped by the Opie and Anthony show in full regalia. We talk to the giant phallus, 43 billion year old, about his first Opie and Anthony experience. So, Odorous, your first Opie and Anthony show appearance, how did it go? I think it went great. I think the guys really liked me. They were obviously very jealous of my six pack abs. And your penis. My penis as well. Well, it is a fish, and that's what I'm sticking to. My lawyer said to say that. Now, you're the first person from another planet ever to come on the Opie and Anthony show. Really? Yeah, is that an honor? That is an honor and a pleasure. I was just a little bit sad that I could not achieve orgasm. Do you feel like you broke stereotypes today for the intergalactic community? Yeah, I definitely broke something besides wind, but uh, yeah, it was good enough to take the paint off the walls. All right, well, great. Thanks a lot, Odors. Do you have anything else to say to the ONA fans or ONA themselves? Hey, ONA! Overeaters Anonymous, stick with it. You can do it, you fat pigs. <laughs> Quit eating, you suck. <laughs> Hopefully, Odorous will come back soon, and when he does, be ready to ejaculate in E Rock's mouth. I'm Primetime Sam Roberts, and this has been Backstage with ONA. Obi and Anthony, Jim Norton, who's going to be on Red Eye with Odorous from Guar. Yep. Speaking of which, here comes Odorous, Urungus, entering the studio. You can barely enter. Hey, how you doing? And everyone uh, at Sirius XM very mad that Odorous is here because he me. fucked up the green room uh, with his costume uh, that yeah. smells. This is costume. This is white formal wear for a scum dog of the universe. Now, this would be for me, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. My rectum is wrecked. I've been out for three and a half months, and there, there has been no shortage of things up my butthole. So really? let me just kind of get this thing on here. Oh, hey. Well, you thanks, big, guys. Bro. And First of all, let me say, uh, I can't believe you had me back. I Thank know. You. <laughs> Nobody amazed. does that. Nobody we're, ever invites me back. We're amazed, too, to tell you the truth. <laughs> and uh, I forgot, what is that called? Your, um, oh, your... this is the Cuttlefish of Cthulhu, of course. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, this is uh, this is what we were. Last time I was on the show, you remember one of your interns mm. desperately working this shaft, desperately cranking my, my ham crank here, trying to to summon a load up out of it and uh you know i've been jacking off all morning trying to get it ready to go uh -huh. I, I think uh i think i'm about ready to go with old oh, faithful is right here is, is it ready to yeah in fact we have uh, one of your interns is going to serve as a human cum dumpster he's going to do his uh impersonation <laughs> of one of tiger woods fucking girlfriends That's i think or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> i think it's graham who's a big guar fan right yeah, yeah, yeah. come on in yeah, what's wrong with that dude graham. Graham, get in here yeah, yeah, I remember we tried this last time. It didn't work too well. Oh, here you go. Now, get that down. We, know, we don't want to uh, ruin the studio. There you go. Oh, now, wow. Neil. Why, Neil. Why is he putting a towel on his head, Anthony? He's kneeling his, his head. He was actually at the show like, last night. Against his face. Okay, now touch it. But there's a hole in the towel. Oh, yeah. Squeeze it. He's oh, squeezing oh, this oh, big... Oh, 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 wait a minute. Oh, yeah. He just... Oh. Oh, 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 this whipped cream in the, uh, oh, yeah. in the penis. Oh, <laughs> it's yeah. All over <laughs> Graham's face. Let me let's see, see Graham. Graham. Graham, let's see. Graham. Wow, how does that oh. feel? Liver? Mm. That's a steamy load. Mm. <laughs> and you like this, Graham? Oh, Graham, oh, you're into this or what? left already. Uh. Why is Graham into getting... Tiger, fucking... your father's dying. <laughs> oh, yeah, let me, let me pop this load. Hold on a sec. Oh, what'd you say? Oh, fuck that. <laughs> now you got whipped cream all over you. All right, I ruined your studio, but, uh, you know, that's okay. We got uh, through the cum shot part. <laughs> that's okay. Now, what's all that other riffraff hanging down? I don't know, dude. I've been on tour now for three and a half months. We just wrapped up everything last night at Irving Plaza here in uh, New York. Oh, you're done? 
I'm all done for now. It's been a it's been a brutal, brutal, brutal tour. Last night it was definitely going to the show was like going down to a plane of hell. The first mm-hmm. song, the bar- the barricade broke. So all these people just were just in this bloody fucking mess. The fucking security guards were trying to put their feet against the barricade to get it back up. Then people kept flying over them and hitting them in the legs. It was a fucking disaster. Hilarious. Actually, it's funnier like it. to look at the audience and look at the band, which is hard to believe. <laughs> it sounds like it. You're uh, you're on Red Eye tonight. Yeah, that's another really weird thing that happened. Uh, you know, I was here in town scoring crack or something, and... Uh, he called me up and he's like, when's the next time you're in New York? We'd love you to do the show. I'm like, I'm in New York right now. And so I just went over there and, you know, met Bill O'Reilly. And the next thing I knew, they're calling me their freaking uh, intergalactic correspondent. Uh-huh. You know, they didn't even ask me. Yeah, yeah, you're uh, the, you're the in, they put that on the uh, screen when you uh, in the intergalactic correspondent. Yeah. You have to think that maybe the uh, the Mayans were right when Odorous is appearing on Fox News. Uh, yeah, you know, can the end of the world be far away? Let's I, hope so. I submit. Uh, yes, no, it's sure. It, but Jim, it, I understand you're on the show tonight. We are on tonight. Yes. Oh, we're gonna tear it up. Last time I was on, Adam Carolla was there. He was kind of a douche to me. Was he really? Yeah. Yeah, he said he liked Slipknot better. I mean, oh, those guys are a bunch of costume clowns. I mean, <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm really from outer space here. Come on, it's not like <laughs> David Bowie or something over oh, here. But anyway, I think I got him around more to my side by the end of this show so yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't get it at all they have me on what, kind, what are you guys they, talking they about tonight? Me back. What, what's don't subject matter? You don't know what you're talking well, about no, tonight, three or four, I think we get the. Uh, uh, I suppose you're gonna do a little uh, Tiger yeah, Woods stuff. I'm sure. Oh. There. We we got got a golf Tiger fan. I have a lot of shit about that. Are you a golf fan? Oh yeah, a lot of people don't know that an uh, odorous. Uh, well, I'm not really very good at golf. Uh, I just pick up the ball and throw it. What I like about golf mm. is that the, they encourage drinking. You know, yes, yes. and bikini, scantily clad bikini chicks driving drink carts. And, uh, you know, basically, I think it's the only professional for- sport where, you know, basically you're encouraged to drink on every hole. Yeah, that or bowling is another drinking sport. Oh, definitely big drinking sport. That's now, Tiger, good. now he doesn't, he doesn't suck down heaters like John Daly does. No. But everybody knows Tiger is a partier. Anyone who watches golf, they have to bleep him constantly. Really? He's got a salty, foul mouth. He has been a player since day one, and everybody knows it. So it's like really the only thing that's surprising about this to me is that he's so stupid. You know, like he would leave those pathetic text messages. Oh, um, do you think maybe you could take my name off of your caller ID? It's like this dumb bitch has got Tiger Woods name on her caller ID. Do you think she's going to take it off for anything? You know how many free drinks that's going to get her? You know how many diseased fucking bang sticks are going to be jammed in her fucking flapping cooter? Thousands. She'll never give up on Tiger, and Tiger won't give up on her because he loves her like he loves all the other sluts that he bangs constantly. The, well, the thing, well, he, well, she wanted uh, <laughs> Tiger wanted her to take her name off the machine, so that way, like, if the wife called, she wouldn't hear her outgoing message going hi. Uh-huh. This, yeah, but see, now you're getting me all muddled up with facts and reality. <laughs> and it's much better if I just make it up. Yeah, you know, it's just like now I'm beginning to think though it's all part of some Uber Tiger conspiracy like he knows full well what he's doing and he's getting ready to make some kind of incredible power move maybe this is how he gets into acting you know you're right i, I did just correct a man wearing a giant whipped cream penis uh, yes. with, with fucking monster feet <laughs> and, a, and a monster face Odorous. and i corrected him on the facts and, 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 <laughs> we could have done, uh, Odorous, we could have done this without the the costume i'm thinking because it's radio they don't know you're wearing a costume but you know you dressed up for us I, I appreciate this. that i just love it you know yeah. i love to do a show play until two in the morning stumble back to the hotel don't even get a shower because i'm so filthy and disgusting then wake up at seven in the morning put I, all this I, shit on and come over here <laughs> and i wanted to mention that because uh your costume stinks <laughs> and i I'm i not, know and that's usually why people don't i don't really care about. about smells for the most part but this costume fucking <laughs> well, you, you <laughs> smell and, and, the- and you know they're really pissed off at the reception area we should get kenny in here or somebody that heard they they want all your stuff out of the green room tell him he has to change back into his regular clothes in the bathroom they don't want anything to do with odorous and guar in this uh at this facility well that's too bad because we We've been up here. We've changed in that room many times. We've we've done yeah. many shows here, and I'm I'm sorry. I Kenny, I what ruined happened? their green room. What happened, Kenny? Kenny heard. Kenny, I mean, I heard, uh, I heard the last part of it. And I asked Kenny, "What the hell's going on?" 
Believe me, you're going to have to fumigate this studio when he's done. Oh, it's... Ow! <laughs> is it that bad? It's horrendous. Yeah, well, it, you know what? My name is Otis. It is. It it's, is. It, See, you just living up to your name, right? Well, I, let's make the most of this on. one, guys, because I, I doubt I'll be back on the show. I but, think uh, it has to do with the uh, whipped cream, perhaps. Uh, well, that uh, was a request. Someone told me that you guys were demanding fine. a cream shot. Dude, the whole Sour, thing's fine. And then, um, what, what was the problem they have with the green room, though? Oh, none whatsoever. I, I came in there. I did my deal. I rolled. No, no, Kenny. No, odorous. This, he's a smelly no, son odorous, of a bitch from outer odorous. space. Yes. We're going to tell you what they said about you after you left. Ooh. Oh. That's what I'm getting at. Oh, okay. What happened? No, they <laughs> called the uh, maintenance workers and facilities and the cleanup crew, and they're down there cleaning up because he spread out all his gear because I guess it was out of order from his show last night. Yeah. And he just stunk up the whole place, and that's where they put like real celebrities. That like well, real odorous, celebrities. odorous isn't a real celebrity. Because I, I've come here to be insulted. Then have really? I? That's great. No. I stink you know up the, the room and I'm not a celebrity. Odorous? That's wonderful. Oh, and this is a costume as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was me. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's okay, guys. I, I, you know. What can I say? I, I've I've made a career out of destroying and stinking yeah. up places. How do you dry clean? Do you dry clean that or launder? Yeah, it just to... send me the bill. Send Sleazy P. Martini the bill. You know. Yeah. God, it doesn't stink any worse than worse than half the shows on this network. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think what else you guys would talk about on Red Eye. I mean, the Tiger's the big thing. What else is going yeah, on? Yeah, we're out getting. There? We're doing, I don't know what they, they usually send me a point sheet like. Yeah. Uh, they send me about like 20 things they want to talk about, and then they have me like get back to them like five or six times throughout the day as they go through everything I potentially could screw up. Yes. And then when I get on the show, they only ask me like two or three things out of the whole list. So basically, I have to spend the whole way doing the whole day doing homework for questions that I don't even get asked. But this does kind of control it a little bit. And I don't get such potty mouth. And uh, the, the thing I have a trouble with is the delay. That screws with me big time. You, got, like, you downstairs, you mean for downstairs? Well, when I do it, uh, I do a lot of facilities. Like when I'm on on tour, I'll be I'll like be in Vegas, or I'll do it from the Vegas facility or whatever. And then the five second delay, like when people are sitting there on the going, you know, and you know the guy's heard the question, but he hasn't said anything yet. I just I, I deliver a, a joke, and nobody laughs, and I'm yeah, like, oh, yeah. I'm not funny anymore. But then five seconds later, oh, I'm oh, like, really? I didn't do anything, and they're laughing. It's just very oh, confusing. Maybe they are I, laughing at you. I, they all are laughing. <laughs> <laughs> maybe the joke wasn't funny, and then they are just laughing Yeah, at it's you. more like the nervous. Just, <laughs> okay, is he going to leave? <laughs> no, but like once again, they keep asking me back. And uh, Do they I, throw you downstairs in the newsroom there, down there? Uh, during yeah, yeah, oh yeah, I met Bill O'Reilly, and, uh, well, I saw him nice running away from me, actually, yeah. screaming, yeah, as he locked himself into his dressing room, but, uh, the reason I stink so bad right now, why are you looking at men on your Facebook page? He's way gay looking. Good point, Danny, why? Danny, comment? Why? Well, the thing is, I was in here before, and I, I was, ex oh, I'm sorry, I just asked him a question and cut him off. Hey, um, Do you I want the before, answer to the question? I was acceptably I I'm stinky just watch. before. I yeah. just watched. I was, was I this, did I smell this bad before, it, guys? Uh, no, it really Not last time. Yeah, it's the whole tour. I mean, I, we just rocked the house, and like, I played like 80 shows in the last three and a half months. Uh, so that's a tour's worth of sweat in that. <laughs> yeah, sweat, You're watching blood, it all hard to watch, right? Excuse me? It's hard to wash. How do you wash it? Yeah, I just walked through a, a car wash, yeah, one of those automated ones. <laughs> Not responsible for shoulder swords. Yeah, well, it made it through the whole thing, and, uh, you know, that's a good thing. It's like uh, we can only build so many armored suits, so it, it held up pretty damn well. It was yeah. a great tour, and now we're getting ready to go savage the Europeans for a few months. So, uh, oh, you're going oh, wow. over there. Yeah, well, we're going to be working on some stuff in the studio for a while. Actually, I've got some pretty exciting projects. Basically, what I'm trying to do is, uh, since no one will really let me on television except for Red Eye, I'm going to start my own television station. That's right. Guar is starting its own web-based television station, very similar to what Tom Green has been doing for the last yes, few years. Yes, indeed. I want to have basically my own network, my own talk show. Basically, it will be uh, like a muscular dystrophy telethon, except it'll be to pay off my, my giant crack debt. Oh, and they, okay. you know, help odorous pay off Sleazy P. Martini. I'll have singing, dancing, <laughs> ritual, animal butt sex, you know, camel dicks. Uh, we won't talk about Tiger unless we want to, of course. And, uh, so I'm going to be doing that for a while. But yeah, after that, we're going to go to Europe. Uh, they actually invited us 
Um, and we're going to be there for a couple months, so mm. doing those big festivals over there. Those people take their metal very, very, very oh, seriously. Oh, yes. Yes, they do. Oh, yeah. I mean, if, you've, if you're familiar with the uh, phenomena of the European patch jacket, you know, the denim vest mm -hmm. with every single fucking dusty-ass metal band that ever was, except exactly. Saxon, you know, uh, what's another good one, uh... I don't know. Uh, Motorhead. Well, no, that's not. That's even way better. But you know, it's just like every obscure, weird metal band. Like, oh, for instance, Man of War. Yeah. You're familiar with Man of War, right? Yeah. Over here, maybe two, three hundred people. Over in Europe, ten thousand, twelve thousand people. They go to the stage riding Harleys. They go up on these ramps. They ride Harleys onto the stage. What? So it's, it's it's a completely different world up there, and also the same thing is happening in Canada. People in Canada support the music scene so much more. We go up to Canada, we play <laughs> in Edmonton, not a big city by any standards, and you know there'll be fifteen hundred, sixteen hundred people there. For some reason, these Euro fucks support music, and there's hey, that guy's good. He's got his patch jacket up already. That's there fucking you awesome. You see that? You like Anvil? Oh, uh, we well, you know. I saw that movie, and, uh, you know, I appreciate what they're doing, because in a lot of ways, they reminded me of us, but, uh, you know, just in their dogged determination, but, damn, you know, it's just like they're not really all that good or all that <laughs> funny, and it was more pathetic, I thought, than anything else, especially when that producer dude is like, I've got this chance to go to England and work with this producer. No, that producer is jacking you for 15,000 pounds. That's not dollars. That's pounds. So you can go over there and record an album in his basement. I thought that was the saddest part of the whole thing, but mm. I'm very, very happy for them and the sets they have. Uh, I, I hope they fucking make a million dollars or whatever it is they're in it for, but, because it's great. To, anybody who works that hard for something, it's it's good to see but, them finally you realize right. their success. You are right. It's like, I hate to say it, but like they're doing very well now, but they're not that good. No. They're not. <laughs> not that good. That's, they're not. They're, they're kind of terrible. But you had to feel the sorry for them. Make it. Do you understand? Fucking Motorhead's I, last album, Motorizer, is is better than stuff they put out twenty years ago. Yeah, Motorhead is one of those few metal bands that actually continues to be just as powerful and awesome oh. as they ever were. And it's kind of uh, scary because as we get further into the history of metal, you know, more and more of the the, the heavyweight bands are going like the route of Metallica. Now, Metallica will always bring it live. They will always tear your fucking head off live. But come on, they haven't done a good album in so freaking long. And I know this is an obvious target, everyone bangs on them, but it's the biggest one. It's like, every time they make an album, it's like, this is the heavy one. We're getting back to the heavens. Like, that's what you said about the last one. And it's just like, no acts are coming forward to replace these bands. Did like, you not like that last I actually liked their last album a lot. You didn't like really? the last no, one? No, I didn't. I didn't like it at all. I, I found it, for instance, the, the video. Um, You know, I judge things on stupid reasons a lot. But, uh, <laughs> you know, it's just like, when I watch the video, it's like seven minutes long. It's all these zombies, this amazing computer animation, and not one second of the band is involved. And I'm like, you know what? The band did not have one thing to do with this production of this video. This were other artists coming in there. You know, we fucking take every penny that we've got and just somehow make this stuff and... And, you know, if Guar had one ounce of the resource that, like, these bands bring and these companies dump into these things for these lame, half-fucking-baked concepts, it's like, we would make a movie, we would make the world fucking rock, but, uh... Oh, that was so lame. We would make the well, world <laughs> rock. Oh, <laughs> you could kick me off right now. I want to ask Danny about Metallica. Is, yeah. is Odorous right about Metallica? Because well, Danny's a big Metallica, Metallica fan. fan. Well, I, don't see them, I just us. haven't dug their shit. You well, know? Let me see what Danny has to say. Well, I did feel that the, their last release, it, it felt uh, very forced. Yeah. You know, and I think that with all, the, with all the backlash they got from releasing St. Anger, I think they went into this uh, album thinking that like they... Like overdoing it, saying, you know, we have to get back to our metal roots, but I don't even think that they remember what those are anymore. So they were just trying to, like, sew together, like, really hard riffs one after another. And uh, they, none of those songs feel like they have any... Like, I don't listen to any of those songs and go, oh, man, that's an awesome song. It's hard as fuck. I don't think they're awesome songs. Mm. I yeah, like Cyanide a lot, and I liked uh, 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 this, uh, I, this Was Just Your Life. I, I like that one, too, a lot. Maybe. They're not you bad, but it doesn't, to me, it just doesn't feel like you put on, like, Ride the Lightning, and you start listening to, like, from yeah. the belt holes. Like, you feel, you're like, fucking A, you know, and like, that's the kind of shit you get into. I don't feel like that with, with the new stuff. I'm not saying it's not Were bad. Were they at least in the studio at like the that. same time for this album, or do they do their parts separately? You know what? I don't even know. Hmm. Well, I, yeah, I, I think they actually work together. They're the. 
old producer I worked with uh, told me about this uh, uh, the band Yes. They were actually hated each other so much they could not be on the same continent with each other <laughs> while they were working on this record because the guy was like, I'm not going to be in the same continent because he could show up at the studio and try to change my track. So it was just like, you know, it's just like there's just nobody stepping up to replace the Metallicas and the Slayers and the Motorheads. What about and, Lamb of God? Well, Lamb of, we just did uh, half this tour with Lamb of God. And they're a great band, and they're also old buddies of ours from Richmond, Virginia. But, you know, do I think they're the next Led Zeppelin? Do I think they're the next Pantera? No. You know, I don't see, you know, as, you know, they're Lamb of God, and they're an awesome band. But where is the, 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 the successor to bands like Metallica that have just dominated metal for so long, and then you, you throw up bands like, I mean, I'll say Lamb of God of all the new bands out there, that's that's probably the best one, but then you get these bands like Trivium, okay, I don't know if you guys are Trivium fans or not, but there's just, I mean, yeah. those guys, their parents bought them a freaking tour bus, and, uh, <laughs> you know, they just suck out loud, and it's just like... Uh, you know, I'm always looking for something more in music. And then the new Slayer album comes out, and it's just like kind of like, okay, it sounds basically exactly like every other record you fucking made. And it's like, metal's got to grow. It's got to do new things. And it's harder and harder to do that all the time, because how many times can you polish a turd? You know, it's just <laughs> like, it's always going to be a guitar going, da, 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 da. So <laughs> yeah, that's it's very, very difficult to come that? up with new and original yeah. stuff. That's why, again, it's, I know I'm very biased from Motorhead, but it's amazing to me that this fucking new album was as Runaround Man, the opening tune, is fucking so heavy, and it's just three guys. It's fucking three guys, and uh, they always put out something good, man. Mm. It's possible to do, but it's just not easy. <laughs> yeah, well, Lemmy has just been unrepentant about his lifestyle from day one. There's no hypocrisy about him. He, uh, you know, we went over to his apartment in Hollywood, and after he showed us his gigantic collection of Nazi memorabilia, he fucking <laughs> laid out a huge line of what crystal meth and ate a steak. He did this huge line of fucking crank <laughs> and then ate a fucking, like, you know, 16-ounce porterhouse. I was just like, whoa. I mean, we, I mean... I don't know if they were really his teeth. Probably not. But uh, <laughs> yeah, he's been a, he's been a meth head his entire life, and he's proud of it. You know? like, he's like, this works true? for me. I believe that's what a motorhead is. Yeah, yeah. but and uh, he, I mean, is he still living that though? I, I don't know. I've heard I he mean, fucking really has not slowed down. My bus driver just finished up a motorhead tour. Those guys, he said, basically they party all night, many nights. He would find Lemmy in the lounge where he was sitting the night before, passed out at the table, a bottle of Jack Daniels in one hand and a Marlboro in the other. And basically, he just wakes up, boom, he's at it again. Yeah, his writer, amazing. his dressing room, uh, he likes to have a big bottle of Jack and sour cream and onion potato chips. Anything healthy isn't allowed within 40 <laughs> feet of his dressing room. <laughs> I'm a firm believer in whatever makes you happy makes you healthy. Uh, a lot of these doctors or whatever, they tell us to put all this shit in our bodies or not to do this and that. Honestly, I've never na noticed a fucking ounce of difference. Anything I've ever, you know, besides eating baby brains and drinking the tears of children, you know, my well, diet is pretty horrible, yes. and I'm still pretty svelte. Well, you got the situation happening. Well, you still I, got I just the, paint uh, on like my six-pack, yeah, which is pretty you good. You paint on your situation. Yeah, it's like, yeah, I should sell this thing. Odor is a six-pack abs. Two I hope, seconds. I hope that looks better from the stage. <laughs> yeah, it's a little rough. <laughs> I, hope, I hope the lights on uh, on the oh. stage help those abs a little more. than. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, an old girlfriend of mine actually thought I was kind of ripped down there, and she's like, where'd they go? I'm like, uh, shut up, put it in your mouth. <laughs> You're not here to talk. <laughs> Right on. Very good, Odorous. Well, uh, thanks for having me back, guys. I want to see uh, Red Eye this evening. Yeah, yes. Jimmy Norton. I know Odorous from Red Eye. We've never met until today, but yeah. uh, I see him on Red Eye, and he's, he's funny. Very funny, man. Yeah, yeah. I, like yeah, I don't know what happened to me today. You know, just, oh, you're uh, fine. You're fine. <laughs> Odorous is fine. Your Hell yeah. Sucks. Well, yeah, we're on Red Eye tonight. Stinks. I'm looking forward to a big yeah. show and all that crap. Can we have to see some Odorous video before we go? Huh? I want to see some Guar video. Guar. Ooh, I, I love to look at myself. <laughs> How long you guys been together? Well, we dethought in Antarctica 25 years ago, and we've been, uh, you know, pummeling the, the music community ever since then. And that's another great thing you can say about Guards. We never stop. You know, a lot of bands will take, like, for instance, the Misfits, who has just become like a, a just a, deba a debacle of what they once used to be. I mean, they've stopped doing it for 13 years, and then they put out another album. They say it's our 30th anniversary. It's like, come on. This is our 25th anniversary. We've been on this planet for a quarter of a century doing this shit. And, uh, oh, there I am. I'm so hot.
for us. Let's get back to it. But anyway, you know, it's the fucking thing. Guar has offered the most consistently relentless and entertaining value since probably the Flintstones. And, uh, they're not actually seeing that on the radio, are they? No, but they're listening to it. <laughs> This is one of our political numbers. Bring back the bomb. The war. You got so many of them, though. It's like, why have them if you're not going to blow them up every now and then? You like uh, Old Merciful Fate? Oh, hell yeah. yeah. I'm a huge King Diamond fan. Yeah. He's fantastic. He's yeah. absolutely yeah. awesome. How the fuck do you guys play your instruments? I don't know how you play with all that shit with on all you. that shit I'll tell you, anybody who has a war and it's like, oh, they can't play, they're just a show band. Well, they're full of shit. My guys are some of the most talented musicians in metal. I mean, you try to play this kind of stuff with a goddamn dinosaur chewing on your scrotum. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's not because we suck that we fucking look like monsters from outer space. It's because we want to do the most <laughs> outrageous show possible. <laughs> but the, the cornerstone of the band is the music. That's where it all starts. That's where it all finishes. If the band didn't rock, we wouldn't have been around for 25 years. If people are so stupid out there that they're still going, oh, why? it's just like a joke band. It's like, then they haven't listened to any of our records, you know? Do you think Venom, Venom, records, Venom, was more of a, uh, Venom was more of a show band where they, they really weren't great musicians? Or? Yeah, you know, but I never even thought about the show thing with Venom. I just loved them so much, you yeah. know? And you know what I'm talking about, Jim? It's like, yeah. There used to be so many great bands like that, you know? And it's just like, what is happening? Especially with like the Overly manicured facial hair, like stoppy, starty, new metal crap. I can't stand that shit. Stoppy, starty. You know, it's just like so many changes, and it's just like you, there's no riff, there's no groove, there's no soul to the music anymore. Yeah. yeah. And it's just like you got to pick it up, boys. Odorous is throwing down the gauntlet here. We don't need this corporate crap rock. Daddy bought me a tour bus. We need, you know, we need the spirit of fucking metal to come back. We need the spirit of Lemmy's warts to infest yes. children everywhere and start doing crystal meth. Yeah, he, Lemmy's got like those uh, sugar pops. Uh, on his <laughs> Dude, he's the fucking great. He opens they the show. Like he opens the show. Are you, are you having a good evening? And they're like, yeah, well, we'll soon put a stop to that. <laughs> We're Motorhead. We're going to clean your clocks. And then they just fucking open up. And There's this, nothing better than that. This is not a Barry Manilow concert. Oh, I should be killed. Oh, yes. uh, <laughs> we would do anything to play with Motorhead. It's not, we've, we've met Lemmy a few times. He actually came to see Guar. He came backstage. I was just like stumbling out of my armor. He looks at me and he goes, I hope I never have to work that hard. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, thanks, yeah, Lem. This drummer, man. fucking, how good is Mickey D, man? That drummer is fucking one of the best drummers ever. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're just, uh, they would probably be, it's a it's a tough fight, but I would have to say Motorhead is my favorite all-time metal band. They've had the most consistently awesome sound, and that, the sound of Lemmy's bass is just so freaking amazing. It's got such a great, like, just like a growl to it. It's yeah. almost like a guitar, but it's still got that bottom end. A lot of bass players go for that fuzzy bass tone and they really lose the bottom end because they think they're playing a guitar they're not and and let is just you know there's few people out there that i will worship as living gods and he's one of them he rules he's got uh what, what's his best uh piece as far as a uh, nazi memorabilia oh, oh easily his ss camel blankets what are really they? gigantic blankets that you put over camels to ride them that have gigantic swastikas and SS runes on them, all like embroidered, absolutely unbelievable. Wow, yeah. nice. He's got some serious shit. Like a lot of English people, he's obsessed with history. Um, and, uh, yeah, his collection is vast and, and, and truly stupendous. But yeah. he's not a Nazi. He just, you know, well, thinks they no, have cool no. clothes. I, I, I've always said uh, the snappiest dressed uh, army ever uh, on the face of the earth in any time period. Uh yeah, I saw him wearing, I guess he had a death head, uh, what do you have, a fucking, a nice hat he was wearing in that one shot that Danny pulled up. Yeah, yeah, he was wearing a, a, an SS officer's helmet there, and it yeah. looks like a, I mean, a hat. And it actually has the Schutzstaffel or the Death's Head. Look at that. Now that, the Death's Head was, uh, basically the symbol of the SS. 
Yeah. Uh, it was first just used for the uh, the guys who ran the death camps, but later everyone liked it so much they all wanted one. Yeah, you know, they get jealous with each other, those <laughs> like, Nazis. Where did they get the skull? Look at them. They, but, I mean, it is pretty wicked, you know. Let me make like, a good Nazi. So, it looks this, like he could be a n fucking Nazi. <laughs> this is like, this is just funny. It's like, this is the insignia of our army, a skull. You know, <laughs> yeah. it's like, there's no bullshit. You know the army's not there to build a school. Fucking <laughs> 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 good point, good point. Absolutely. How's our war doing? Have you guys uh, ragged on the war at all? What's going on with that? Do you talk about that much? Well, uh, well we got uh, our, our warmonger president in there now, who's uh, committing more troops. Yeah. Um, and I, I really don't uh, There's care. no way that the, the United States will ever prevail in Afghanistan militarily. If anyone knows anything about that country, they have tried to uh, conquer that country now for centuries. And yes. no one, from Genghis Khan to Alexander to freaking Gorbachev, you know, no one has succeeded and no one ever will. And it's just like... You know, maybe the fact that, like, 95% of the world's dope comes from there has something to do with it, but I, I just can't figure it out. Don't you have any kind of futuristic space weaponry you can help us with? Yeah, we do. We have access to all kinds of that shit. But uh, we are purists in the fact that we oh. just like to use medieval weapons. It's just much more personal. Yeah, yeah. Nice you know, I can start mesa. dropping bombs and, you know, spraying AKs into the crowd. But, uh, but when you backhand someone with those gauntlets. Much, much nicer. Yeah, the meaty thwack of a my syphilitic <laughs> penis smacking into a, br a, a braced face. <laughs> Knocking the braces out of a child's mouth with my penis. <laughs> Fantastic. We recently played a benefit. At Fire Island for uh, for gay people who have rotting assholes, and uh, it was so great. I was pissing out this stream of cum, and the gay men were leaping up the cum like they looked like salmon. It was just like oh, oh, oh. after the show, I pulled three retainers, four gold teeth, and eight wads of chewing gum out of my dick slit. Jesus. Uh, yeah. oh, I love it. <laughs> is going to be on Red Eye tonight, believe yes, it or not. Yes, he with is. Jimmy on the Fox News Show with Jim Norton. Good for I, Gutfeld. I, I highly like recommend you check it out. What, yeah. a, what a fucking... It's just great to see on the Fox yeah. News Channel set dressed as that. It's, it's so amazing. Funny. It's funny to it's see a, it's that. It's amazing. The logo, the TV's behind you, and there's you discussing the events. The really? Or yeah. something. Yeah. It's like the funniest thing is they make me when I get there. They the first thing they do is they run at me with a black wrap and just wrap me up from the waist down. They're like, oh, just yeah, don't yeah. basically come anywhere near the building with that thing hanging out. They, yeah, that could be a problem. With human yeah, resources. I think Bill O'Reilly was jealous. <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't really meet Bill O'Reilly, did you? No, no, I lied about that as well. Yeah, right. yeah. Greg is a great guy. He's an old school Guar fan. And like for one weird moment last we're night, we're laughing. Show, Hold on, we're laughing because there you are <laughs> with the Fox News Channel logo. It's just that's just something just inherently wrong about that. Or an alien monster. A lot of hot bitches on that show. My body was taken for Damn, he gets some. He gets all 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 Greg has the most beautiful wife as well. He's a great guy. He even talks. And uh, yeah, he's the guy who puts war back on TV, and, and that's pretty amazing. <laughs> exactly. And look how cute I am. It's, uh, yeah. we're working great with the Fox colors. I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It works out yeah. pretty good. All yeah, right. Greg's a great guy. Hey, he's funny. He's funny as hell. He used to what? He used to run the Maxim in London, I think. Uh, yep. I read his yeah. book about being over there. I'm actually writing a book right now. I'm scribbling it on, uh, in crayon on old pieces of toilet paper, though, so it's kind of not getting there. But if you go to www.rvanews.com, you can read all the stuff about war that you ever didn't want to know. And, uh, cause I've got my book I'm getting ready to do, and I guess that was the part where I try to plug it. But, <laughs> it's absolutely <laughs> fucking hilarious. It tells the whole, it's called Me, Guar, and the Onrushing Grip of Death. And it tells oh, the whole story of Guar you. from the very sickening beginnings to whatever it is that we're doing right now, though the sickening part has remained consistent. How, uh, I forget the name of Gutfeld's first book. His second one's not out. It's, his first, it's fucking yeah, it's, hilarious. That's what, that's what inspired me, actually, to finally put together all my grotesque stories, was reading Greg's book. It's about him when he's in England. Like if that asshole can do it, it's very funny. <laughs> you know, of course I can. <laughs> he's uh, he's uh, I actually last night I was I was doing the show and I looked down in the in the barricade before it broke and uh, there was this one security guard that was stripped to the waist who looked just like Greg and for one moment I thought. Why is Greg Gutfeld stripped to the waist in the slam pit at a Guar show? But uh, probably because he's an alcoholic. That could yeah. be it. Is he? Oh, it. Gutfeld's a drunk. Does he oh, drink? Yeah. Like okay, well, good. We'll be hitting the bars tonight. He likes his wine. Does he? Yeah, we did. Uh, we did the show Thursday and uh, went out afterwards. And he was. Does that you know, creep we'll think he's a, a gentleman? Of, uh, 
A lot of drunks will start drinking wine to kind of cover up for the fact that they're completely drunk. Yeah. You know, wine supposedly doesn't, like, get you drunk. That's what Al Jurgensen did. We talked about him a lot last time. He's like, gets you yeah, Al doesn't up. drink anymore, man. He, he doesn't do heroin. He just drinks wine, man. Yeah, like eight bottles a day. <laughs> that still will fuck you up. Certainly will. Uh, Odorous, um, we're actually behind on reads well, now. I can, and I can, else, I, I get the I can see will, over there, and uh, yes, and uh, I'm out of here. We will see you there on goes Red Eye with Jimmy Norton see you tonight. tonight. This evening, on the Fox yes, News Channel. Thank you very much for having me back, Jim. Great meeting you. You too. Uh, send the fumigation bill to <laughs> Sweezy, and I promise, if you guys ever have me back on here today. I will bring a new, a brand spanking new armored war suit. Nice. It won't smell at all. Thank you, sir. All right, guys. Odorous. There goes Odorous. 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 Traveling back. Can someone get the door for Odorous? Odorous. Yeah. He can't. On the carpet. And <laughs> Look at his head. Yeah, his, what the fuck, Odorous? His shoulder swords <laughs> hit fucking, everything what is, what is, uh, on his way out. Where's his little thong? Get e rock in here. Where's his little thong? Where's e rock? Yeah, where's e rock? Get e rock in here. I want e rock to smell the seat. He has to smell the seat. Smell the seat. Because he's pretty much sitting on the seat with fucking. Get e rock. Just his bare ass on the seat. Just, just his ass. Yeah, just his ass. Just his ass, right there on the seat. I want Iraq to stick his face right on so there. So do I. And sniff away. And the seat will go yuck. <laughs> Get oh, that. my God, that thing oh just Oh, my stinks. God, it smells. Oh. He's very entertaining. Yeah, yeah. The, the studio stinks on ice, though. Wait till wait till the Ron and Fez show come in here. You know it's not going to uh, diffuse. He just banged into equipment going down the hall. He can't. How does he, he get really anywhere see. with that? <laughs> He's a monster. How does he fly on the plane with the monster hat? I don't know. They won't let him on with those big knives on his shoulders, that's for sure. I bet he has to check that. Yeah, he, uh... God, Gwar's been around forever, huh? All right, let's go to break. I don't, I don't, yeah. know. I don't really know. Where's Iraq? No, Iraq? Dave. Where's Iraq? All right, M.I.A. Right, oh, okay. M.I.A.? All right, after the break. we got to take a break. M.I.A. Okay, Anthony, stay there. A mightily incompetent asshole. <laughs>